All right, we're here. <laughs> let's go. Uh, let's see. Today is Sunday, which is not a normal streaming day for me, but it is Sunday, February 23rd of the year 2020, and we're back for another stream. Hey, what's up, Stanislav? Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> I wasn't exactly planning to stream today, but someone in my Discord was like, are you streaming today? And I was like, why not? Let's do it. Because, uh, you know, I plan to, to write some code today anyway, so I figured, you know, why, why not? We might as well stream. So that's what we're doing. Um, not that much has happened since yesterday. Uh, I did do a few little things, um, uh, off camera. <laughs> and if, <laughs> one of them, I don't understand why I did, but we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Hey, what's up, Marco? Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> one of the things I did off camera was, um... I merged a bunch of PRs to pre-commit, which changes how, or which which adds support for a new hook, the post checkout hook. Uh, it also, this one also fixes an error case, which uh, just like a slight oversight. I also added uh, some nice aliases to make some of the commands a little bit more readable because before they were dash dash source and dash dash origin, which I couldn't fucking remember the difference between source and origin, so I don't really expect anyone else to know the difference. Um, so I, I switched it to being from ref and to ref, and then we'll keep these around for backward compatibility. Though I suspect almost no one is using these options, but... Uh, oh, and I guess I could eventually deprecate them, but... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But the other thing, and the reason, the reason that I'm like... What, what the heck, self? Uh, I wrote this PR, which um, fixes a little bit of post-checkout. And when I merged it, I swore this was green, but it was very much not green. Uh, so I, the master build is currently broken. Um, oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, and it was just because I'm missing test coverage for that change. Um, I do actually have test coverage because like there was a failing test that I made pass, but it was it's running out of process, so the coverage utility doesn't understand it. So I added a slight, uh, a simple in process test, which also exercises that code. And uh, this should should uh, you know knock on wood should fix the test coverage there. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Windows, you're always the slow one. That's because you have to do. Well, actually, the tests are just slow, huh? weird. I mean, it makes sense. Subprocesses on Windows are significantly slower than everything else, but uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? Oh, I forgot to mute Discord. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Arkham. <laughs> um, someone pinged me on Discord. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, subprocesses on Windows are, are way slower than, than usual, so it makes it makes sense that they are slower. Uh, but yeah, back to what we're actually working on today, which is more of the syntax highlighting stuff. Hey, what's up, Sarcastic Dante? Uh, so I found this article last stream. Uh, it was written way back in February of 2017, but you know, I've, I've finally picked it up three years later and it's going to help me improve my, my implementation. Hopefully, we'll see. If it doesn't make things faster, I'm going to be a little bit sad because... Uh, it really should make things faster. Uh, we'll leave we'll leave chat up, up over here. Found a terminal editor in Rust. Oh man, is it called Vavu? <laughs> uh, bad joke. Uh, it's called Iota. People people knocking off nano names here. Is this another nano clone? Iota is a terminal based text editor written in Rust. Here's what it looks like right now, editing itself. Nice. I was bored out of my frustrations with existing text, text editors. I see. Why rest? Because it's fun and why not? Interesting. <clears throat> you can move the cursor around with the arrow keys. Nice. Starting off to a good, good start there. Uh, save, quit, undo, redo. Okay. That's some keybinds. Uh, mine has way more keybinds, it looks like, but, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not starting editor wars here. 
Yeah, it does kind of look like a Vim clone, although I don't think Vim has stuff like this, so... It seems to be, like, a slight mishmash. Also, it has Emacs key binding, so it looks like it's just kind of a editor thing. And also create buffers from standard... How does that work? I guess it would open, like, dev TTY and then do some fun stuff there. Interesting. Looks cool. Uh, but yeah, anyway, found this article, and I read through it off off camera. Uh, it's really long, but <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'm going to sum it up for you and explain what's different. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that is with some, uh, some solid paint drawing here. Uh, so I'll show you like kind of how my syntax highlighter works right now, and then I'll show you uh, their optimizations to this. So let's take a line of syntax and just write that out. So let's say, I don't know, def foo a to none. So say we're looking at a particular line of code here, and there's two portions that cause matching here. One of them is the, the grammar. Give that guy a little box. One of them is the grammar, and the other is the theme. And the grammar is what tokenizes this string into a bunch of different tokens, and then the theme applies styles to it. And so what you might get out from this, well, and the grammar has a name. So in this case, like, let's say that our grammar has the name uh, source.python. And this grammar is going to assign token names to each of these, and they're they're uh, kind of a hierarchy, so they'll they'll nest within each other. So this string, uh, this whole string, would be source.python. Where's the line tool? Sure, we'll use gray. Uh, so this whole thing here would be source.python. Hey, what's up, Stork? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, that actually could be fun to make. <laughs> yeah, it could be fun to make. Um, so like this whole thing is source.python. Um, nested within that, you might have like, well, let's pick a different color, like dark red. You might have uh, like, well, these would both be keywords. Yeah. You might have like source.python or, you know, Keyword dot python or something like that and then i don't know uh green <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit of time to write out but we'll, we'll get there in the end uh name let's see name dot python <laughs> and maybe we have like orange for built-in But anyway, oh, and then we'll do we'll do this one here because that one's actually going to be more interesting than the others. A line. This one is parameter Python. Stork says thank you for the stream. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Just not in Python. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a parameter, but it is also a name. So we would also have an additional name highlight below that a more specific uh, thing here. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the result of all these tokens is kind of a, a tuple of, you know, and, and they call them scopes. Uh, or the scope is a tuple of names. I, I don't know. <laughs> but if we're looking at just A here, its full scope would be... Uh, we're looking at a here it would be source dot python and then nested with parameter dot python uh, we'll just make this really long and then name dot python or something like that the actual names are slightly different but this is what um this this uh a is right here hey what's up brett miller it thank you for the follow welcome welcome um, so this this is what the grammar does. The grammar splits it into tokens here, and you have tokens like this. The theme has a list of rules and styles. It kind of reads like a CSS style sheet in a little bit, uh, in, in 
in kind of a way. Uh, so here's like some examples of what you might see here. So you might see like name, which is foreground of, you know, some, some hex code. Uh, you might see like built in, which would be, you know, bold, uh, <laughs> font style bold. Um, you can also have nested things. So let's say, um, a a uh, a name is this color, but maybe a parameter name is a different color. Uh, and and there's a bunch of like binding rules for all of this. But anyway, this is this is kind of how the grammar and themes are set up. The way my editor works today is it first does all this tokenization, and so you get uh, a sequence here, and then it takes this tokenization and uh, oh that was weird. Why does doing this Why does it move the text that's inside this box? Oh, now it doesn't. That's weird. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Paint, what are you doing? Uh, my, my editor currently does this tokenization, similar to how VS Code does it. Uh, but then everything is different from beyond there. So what I do is I generate all of these like tuples over and over and over. And then every single token, I look up against the theme and ask the theme, hey, what what style should this be? And it does kind of the cascade and, and does that, but it does it for every single token. And the result of this is, uh, the result of this is if we profile this, um, profile this real quickly. Uh, the result of this is we spend a considerable amount of time doing this theme selection. So if you look here, uh, this highlight thing is what's actually producing the highlighting. Uh, I can show you that too, because we actually hid the output there. So if we don't hide the output, it spews to the screen, but this is it highlighting uh, one of the files in my text editor. And it works, but uh, you'll notice here that we spend, uh, hey, what's up, Nicket? Thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome. Uh, you notice we spend almost 20% of our time doing this select function, and this is the theme generation, um, which you know boils down to a bunch of like tuple slices and a bunch of string matching, which we call we call stir dot starts with uh, 170,000 times, and um, the VS Code guys pointed out kind of a nifty way to do this. So I'm currently it's. Uh, they refer to it in their document as kind of three-phase parsing, where like the first phase is tokenization, and then the second phase is theming, and then the third phase is applying the themes. Uh, I guess there's a second part here, like this is what we get out from the select function, and then we convert that into whatever output format is. So for, for example, in this terminal output, we're generating terminal escape sequences. In our text editor, babby, vm, bin, babby. In our text editor, this, oh, that's not the right branch. In our text editor, this ends up being curses, um, adders and, and stuff. Um, so that's, that's the third phase. So like right now what I'm doing is, uh, Here's our text. So like today, phase one is tokenization. And we'll give this bold. And then today, phase two is theme selection. And then, and today, phase three is uh, output formatting. So this is either like, oops, either curses or terminal escapes. But uh, what VS Code proposes and what they've implemented in their editor is a single phase that does all of this at once and does it much more efficiently. Um, 
their their tokenization is very similar to mine and so like we won't actually be changing the tokenization much but we'll be doing this theming and output at the same time and the way that they propose this is they take these sets of grammar rules and i don't know these ones aren't particularly interesting but let's add one more that is interesting um let's say you know parameter dot python is always going to be uh italic Um, oh, I shouldn't have written it like that. Let me, oops, let me move this down here. Uh, yeah, so let's let's add you know parameter dot python name, which will be well, we'll just do this. Oh, and I realized this uh, selector here. Oh no, the selector is fine. Okay, so this allows us to do something like this. Uh, so what they suggest and what they, they've built is they've tra transformed this theme, which is kind of a linear list of rules. And uh, I'm naively doing, well, it ends up being an n-cubed lookup on, on themes, but uh, it's, you know, it has to iterate through each row for every scope to figure out what thing it is. And then there's some other uh, breakdown, like you need to substring all these and it ends up being, it ends up being pretty slow. Uh, but what they propose is turning this, you know, flat list into a try, which is a special type of data structure that I haven't written in a long time. So we'll see if I'm able to write one. <laughs> um, this is kind of our root node. So a try is a tree-like structure that allows you to, if I remember right, it allows you to have lots of children at each node. Uh, and the lookup ends up being linear on the number of uh, elements you have, or not not that, linear on the key that you're looking at. So normally the the description that they have for a try is a character try. Uh, we don't want that anymore. So a character try like, you know, starts with some letter. So let's say it starts with C and, you know, branches out to a bunch of different sub letters. And so maybe you have, um, <laughs> Jess and Onion says, hard to believe that people are watching this. Wow. All right, bud. <laughs> why Why do you say that? Because it's boring? <laughs> You're sorry. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you think it's boring, that's fine. You don't have to watch. Um... <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh. oh, that's gross. Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna make oh. my uh, terrible paint drawing is running out of room here. Uh, but anyway, like you would, you would uh, look up kind of based on a tree here. So let's say we're looking up the word cat, and you would store data on these as well. But you traverse down this, and you get C, and then to A, and then to T, and so you have like um, character. <laughs> because it's so obscure. <laughs> this makes good background noise for me. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the actual programming soon, I, I, pr I, I promise. Uh, but what they, what they suggest is like taking each of these theme rules and turning them into a try. That way, uh, well, it would, it would take my current lookup, which is, you know, n cubed and make it linear. So that would be one benefit to it. Uh, but then they also take that try and do it during the tokenization phase. So you get kind of a, a nested hierarchy. So you might, you know, some some rule might apply to source.python. It's pretty unlikely that one does, but it might. Uh, and then like for this A parameter here, you would have the styles from this, uh, over overlay the styles from this, and then overlay the styles from this. And so you kind of uh, linearize your your styling there. So that's what we're going to try and implement. Uh, I'm going to try and implement a try. I don't quite remember how to do it, uh, so we might do some Googling for that. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to try implementing a try, and if that doesn't go well, then then we'll Google it. But that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, workspace. We're going to first turn on my editor, so. We'll be using that the whole time. Hey, what's up, Chess and Onions? Thank you for the follow, even though my stream is so boring. <laughs> Loaded question, but who do you think is the best mathematician of all time? 
Uh, you're assuming I can name a mathematician. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think the only mathematician I can think of right now is Fermat. Which um, probably means that I'm not so good at naming mathematicians. Uh. <laughs> Freeman is okay. Good answer. All right. Well, at least at least I know uh, I know one. Psychoed asks, "What am I doing? I'm making this chunk right here not so slow, based on the uh, advice in this article here." <clears throat> Pythagoras, there's another one, that's true. You know, Sir Sir Pythagoras and his theorem. Uh I guess I know what's what's his name? Lopital. <laughs> Isbrick says, try sleep, except sleep exception as insomnia. True. Pythagoras was good, but he didn't like beans. <laughs> Is this a zoomer meme? Uh what's the like? Uh, shadow monsters, me and the boys looking for beans. <clears throat> yeah, this one. Anyway, I'm not gonna play it because it's loud, but <laughs> there's there's a meme about looking for beans. Um, but yeah, we'll keep this profile around because we're gonna need it later. Uh, previous dot svg. All right, so. See if I remember my my tree. So, my try. Uh, DVIR sixty six says I have a question on Python. Well, feel free to ask. We'll hopefully be able to help. Um, okay. So that's the theme lookup. That's the theme parsing. So we'll probably put our code here. Um. <clears throat> How does this work? So we need a root node that's empty. Uh, so it'll have, we're gonna do a try of strings. So we don't actually need the key here, do we? Uh, but we do need the style information at each level. Let's also get this alias in the other tab, so we'll continue to use my text editor. Which supports backgrounding, woo! <laughs> uh, style. Oh, these are no longer optional. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Leonard Euler runs his own math challenges on his website, projecteuler.net, which is amazing since he died in 1783. <laughs> right, Joey's Pites. Justin Onion says, stupid question, but what programming language is this? This is Python. Um, it's Python, but I'm using type annotations, so uh, it might look not so much like Python, but it, it trust me, it is. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's it just looks a little bit different. <clears throat> uh, DVIR says, if x equals d, d, u, i, y, d, d, how can I find the index of the fourth d? Um, so, I guess we'll do that real quickly. x equals d, d, u, i, y, d, d. Um, so there's two methods that are helpful here. There's index, and you can also pass in a start value. So... Let's say you wanted to find, let's let's just do the third one. Uh, while n, or I guess, we'll, we'll call our variable offset, and that'll be like our position in the string that we're looking from onwards. While n, yeah, while n is greater than zero. Let's see. Offset equals x dot index d offset 
times n minus equals 1. And so we should get, after this is done, oh, this should be plus 1. Dang it. Well, let's just write a function. <laughs> X, uh, let's see, S and needle and N. S is a stir, needle is a stir, N is an int, and we'll return an int. Uh, offset equals zero, while N is greater than zero. Oh, this should be s dot index needle plus one, and this will raise an exception if it doesn't get contained there. Uh, we also need to offset it. I'm using spaces there because the tab key will create a tab character, and I just don't like tabs. Uh, return n. Oh, it should have been return offset minus one. No. <laughs> uh, this is why we write in. Uh, in actual Python files. That's not babby. Was a D D U I Y D D, and we're searching for the fourth D or the third D. So that's wrong. It's off by one. Uh, cool. And if we want the fourth D, we'll get the last character, and if we want the fifth D, we'll get an exception. So anyway, that, anyway, that was. That's how I would do it. Uh, index and this offset parameter are kind of the key here. So hopefully that's helpful. <clears throat> uh, the last time I learned programming, I was forced to learn Pascal. I've never actually worked on Pascal, so I don't know anything about that. Sarcastic Dante asks, is there an option to hide this top bar in Nano or in Babby? No, <laughs> there is not. <laughs> um, well, I guess there is an option to hide the top bar. Uh, if you make your window <laughs> two lines tall, it gets hidden. <laughs> so you could program like this. <laughs> Look, there's no top bar anymore. <laughs> but now you'll notice that there's a bottom bar. And the top, the bottom bar can get hidden when it's one, one tall. <laughs> but then, like, if you ever press this, you get a... Uh, status message over it. <laughs> and yes, I did special case one tall windows, which uh, was kind of a royal pain, but it does work. <clears throat> Hashtag wasting space, yeah. Well, what does Vim do? Doesn't Vim have? Uh, I guess Vim just has a bottom bar. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's no option for it because I kind of like the top bar, but maybe, maybe, when uh, when it's more done, someone can make an option for it, and then there can be there can be a, a babby RC or whatever. Okay, so they talk about their trinode in here. They have their styles on it, but they also have this parent attribute, which can sometimes be there. Uh, and this is kind of like a not a trinode, but something else. Um. I guess you put your default styles here. Mm, I see how this works. Uh, but maybe you don't put your default styles. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want to put your default styles there. Style. All right. And we're not going to worry about parents for now. And we're going to make a second style class where everything is optional. Oh man, I cannot type today. Uh, 
That's why we'll copy and paste instead. Okay, so I think this is all we need for our structure and like, we'll have a uh, parent also, which I guess would also be, you could have multiple parents, right? I don't know how that would work. <laughs> well, we'll not worry about parent for now. Uh, but we basically need a way to transform this theme object into, well, the original theme object. Uh, hmm. Uh, def build try. Oh, and this is circular, so we'll need protocols. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I think this is enough to be able to try. We'll try. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the way I'm gonna build this is um, The way I'm gonna build this, because I eventually want an immutable object. Actually, I can just do this, that way we don't get the line break there. Oops. We want to cut this and then paste, there we go. Um, we're gonna build it as a dictionary and then convert it into this structure probably recursively. Uh, that way we can build up the data structure and then freeze it to make it immutable. Uh... We're still doing that same Heckity uncommenting thing that we did before. They also do some optimizations in their implementation where they find all the colors up front and then uh, replace them with integers. We're gonna do something similar, but I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. Empi says, what do you do on your dev job? Um, you mean like, what do I do for work? Uh, I work at this this little company called Lyft, um, where I work on developer experience and tooling and stuff. And I don't know, this is probably copyrighted, so let's not <laughs> show that on screen. Uh, I work on developer experience, so I build tools and infrastructure for other developers. Uh, the the hopes of making them productive, but <laughs> it's not an easy problem. So we we try our best, but um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we probably need, let's just leave out the default color stuff for now. Actually, let's just grab this whole code and see where it leads us. <clears throat> it's all a copy and paste. Code Monkey JS, welcome back friend. Haven't seen you in a while. Baby looks nice, right? It works. It's highlighting code. Fucking wild. Um. Yeah, so we're not actually gonna do it this way though. This is VS Code's uh, dark theme, yes. This is uh, 
It's working. Uh... This is one of my favorite songs <laughs> that's in this playlist, but it might just be because I've heard it a million times. FD, no, FG. Uh, are you done with optimization? No, we're actually working on an optimization today. I default equals false, you default equals false. I think what this is actually going to return is the default style and the theme try. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And we did eventually answer this question. If it's a stir, then we split. And there's some bugs and some themes, but we fixed one of them that had that bug. And then we have this scope here. Okay, so this is where we're actually building on this try here. Um, If space in scope we'll skip that one because uh, I don't know how to implement that one quite yet for scope in or for parts in scope dot split dot this is where we're gonna build our try nodes up uh could monkey j ask, asks what are you trying to optimize today uh what did i call this previous dot svg uh we're trying to optimize theme selection today and this is the per particular part which is currently spending 20 percent of our uh, of our execution on the actual theming part. And this is because I'm doing an n cubed lookup and I believe I can get it down to linear time and maybe even better than linear time. And I'm basing it on this article here. Already looks inefficient. <laughs> well, this is the like, this is the parsing part. Um, this is just parsing the theme file and building up a structure. This will only run once and won't run every single time. So it shouldn't be that bad. But you're right, it does, it looks inefficient because there's a lot of for loops here, but it's it's fine. Um, okay, so we start at the root. Um, let's see. We do that? No, because it's Python. Wow. Wow, sarcastic Dante. What profile is that? Uh, I used, this is how I generated it. Um, so I used C profile to run this, which outputted to a pstats file. And then I used this tool, gprof to dot, which I'm actually using a fork of it. Yelp's, Yelp's version of gprof to dot. And this converts the pstats file into a dot file. 
dot is a like graph is tool. And then I use dot to convert it from a dot file into SVG. But it's, I don't know, it's a two-step pipeline. It's not too bad. And it, it works pretty well. I think this is enough to traverse. Let's see what this looks like. This is, what is this function called? Build, build, try. Demo diff is the simple one. F dict is not defined. Do we not have F dict here? Oh, it's down there. Yeah. Move it up to the top. Because it's unrelated to other stuff. What do you mean? Oh, this needs quoting. Invalid syntax. Bite me. Okay. Root is that. And if we step over this line, we should get meta, which what is our selector? Meta dot embedded. Okay, and then if we step through this again. EP root, and then meta has a, oops, that wasn't supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be root children. Uh, DVIR asks, why do you use Linux? Uh, I don't know. I like the developer tools on it. It works well for me. So that's basically it. Let's read kernel children. Ah. Uh. <laughs> hey, look, now it fits. Okay, so that's our traversal. And then. Then we'll do cur dot update theme item settings. Yeah, I think that's enough to build our try. See what that looks like. Hmm. We do skip one thing in our theme, which is a little bit annoying. Hey, what's up, Nack Lyric? Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, it's pretty hard to see. Um, but I can see at least some of them here. I wish it didn't do this like really obnoxious importing here or indenting here. I've been meaning to rewrite pprint to not suck as much. I wonder if we can use black to make it look less shit. Oh, we can use we can use add trailing comma. We don't use black in this house because <laughs> I type black. Uh... Oh yeah, I could use JSON. That would work. Yeah, that looks a little less shit. <laughs> oh right, this is the name tuple that's at the top. I don't know why I didn't. I should not have done that. Uh, 
Well, I guess we could do it that way. I guess we could do it that way. Uh, Kerr. Well, we have to build the style node later, so let's not do it that way. But we can see some of the rules here. Uh, like meta.children.embedded. or sorry, meta.embedded.assembly has a foreground of this. Uh, whereas meta dot uh, preprocessor dot string has this, and so you can see like how you would do a linear lookup here. Okay, so now we need to convert this into our immutable structure, <laughs> which is gonna be fun. Um. Oh, I forgot the actual parameter here. Shouldn't I convert tuples to an array of two items? Uh, you mean name tuples? You would think that. However, uh, so let's take style two for instance. Uh, if you look at this name tuple, it is actually a tuple underneath. In fact, if you convert it to a tuple, you can see it's just a tuple of this. And what JSON does is it says, oh, is instance, is instance name tuple tuple. Cool. Well, then I will just convert it into a list and JSON dump that. Cool object is not iterable. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> right. Convert it to a list and then JSON dumps it. And so that's why you end up with that. You're right, it would probably be better if it turned it into a dictionary, but this is one of the like, you know, duck typing issues of Python. So that's why it does that. Turn theme, return class. File and then f dict of uh, dict children. Oh, but this needs to be recursive. <laughs> right. Right. So that's where this gets tricky. This is actually dictionary comprehension. I just have to say the the highlighting here is actually really nice. Uh, I'm really really pretty happy with this so far. Does this fit on one line? Kinda does. Nope. One character too long. Okay, so I think this should be able to convert us into that. Why does it convert it to a list? Because it uh, does the same thing for tuples. This gets converted to a list. And so because it passes the instance check for a tuple, it converts it. This 
gets on one line, though. Understanding tuples. Tuples are just a value with two values inside it. So that's a two tuple. This is a two tuple. Uh, tuple is any number of elements. Um, this is this is a six tuple, for instance. Hey, what's up, Enzac? How did this work before? Duplicate this parsing logic, unfortunately. Uh, it's just a key pair then? Well, you could also have a zero tuple or a one tuple. It's really just a like collection, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's a collection of values. It's kind of, it's how multiple return values are implemented in Python, for instance. Um, So like a comma b equals f. That's this is a returning a tuple and this is an unpacking of a tuple. It's uh, I mean C++ has the same concept uh, after C++ C++ 11, I think. But it, it can have any amount of linear dimensions. It's a way to collect similar things. And then names tuple is builds on top of that and makes named attributes for those elements. <clears throat> PyMage? This, what does that mean? Um, JavaScript doesn't really have an equivalent. It's like an array that you can't change. But it is, it is kind of like an array, a, a JavaScript array, but also not really. <laughs> Dennis Last Miles is a white mage of C and you're a Python mage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so for the default scope, we need to do the parsing here. Actually, let's just do it this way. Oh, so background, we want to be black by default. Hey, what's up, Aki Donoff? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Uh, style two dot parse. Theme item settings and update defaults. So we'll make a method to like merge these style two objects on top of uh, on top of the style objects. Turn default and 
and our trinode structure. <clears throat> JS has immutable arrays now. Oh, okay. Enzax says, I wasn't from the beginning, but you just wanted to convert a name tuple to JSON. No, I was accidentally converting a name tuple to JSON. Um, and then somebody asked why, why that happened. Okay, so where's our style two? talking about Python again. No, we finally did benchmarks with Dennis Mandelbrot, so he's moving it to P threads of OpenMP so we can do multi-thread things with fractals. <laughs> what? <laughs> that sounds slightly wild. Uh, we're missing parentheses here. Yeah, you know how I can tell we're missing parentheses because that's the only time that these turn red. <laughs> Oops, put too many parentheses there. Um, okay, let's see what this does. File has no attribute from dict. All right, so we need to implement that. From dict. And yes, I know I spelled class method wrong. We'll fix that. Uh, POSIX compliant, run on everything from Solaris and FreeBSD to Linux machines, including old Pentium 2s. Does that include with processor bugs? Foreground, KVPG, KVPG. 
<clears throat> hey, what's up, fish soup recipe? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. We're not making any fish soups here, but we are codding, so uh, hopefully that'll tide you over. <clears throat> oh, fuck you. We've got a bot in the chat. Yes. And you're banned. Bye. Goodbye. Hi, I like your channel. Check out my profile and click on the link. Blah, 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 blah. Jerks. Style 2 has no from dict, right? Because I put an underscore in front of it for some reason. Okay, so we are parsing that now. Um, hmm. What can I do without rewriting all the code yet to validate that this works? We could delete the theme and see what happens. Let's delete the theme and then see what breaks and then go from there. Actually, we can pre-commit run my pie. <laughs> RIP. Breeze of Nilo Wall Hood 61 Viz 2020 to 2020. That's true. That's true. They died a swift chat death. Um, so it should error in a bunch of place. Uh, watch that. Style 2 has an attribute parse. Oh, this should be from Dict. And now this line is too long. No. Maybe we'll call this apply. Still too long. <laughs> uh, hmm. Theme item. Uh, let's call that rule instead. We can change this back to update. <clears throat> Info, installing component Rust standard. <laughs> Rust STD. My PC just got an STD. Did you see, did you see our clip from yesterday? Uh, sarcastic Dante. We found, uh, we found some sneaky stuff in Visual Studio Code. He even has debated in the URL. NSFW? <laughs> this is such a risky Google search in retrospect. Holy shit. <laughs> Node Sentinel file watcher. <laughs> Sneaky. Man, imagine the weird stuff I could have found with VS Code not safe for work. <laughs> that was... I <laughs> I would I would say bravery, but no, that was just I was just being not not even thinking, just like VS Code NSFW. Let's Google search that. Uh, so I guess I got a little bit lucky there. One eighty five need type for this bad boy. It is a dickster. Any it does not have a good type. Uh, Style two has no attribute updates. What do you mean? Oh, it's called merge. <clears throat> One man's stupidity is another man's bravery. <laughs> Indeed it is. Draw screen takes theme. You know, what? I'm going to get rid of the curses implementation here. Uh, we have the curses implementation in Babby itself, so it's less useful here. And it's just kind of getting in the way here. So, yeet. Okay. 
Alright, that reduces the amount of stuff we need to do here. Highlight output. Okay, so our theme now has two things. It has the try and um actually I guess I guess we can make a new theme type. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's make a new theme type. Arguments for a theme. What do you mean too many arguments for a theme? It's right here. There's only two. What? What? <laughs> what do you what do you mean too many arguments for a theme? There's only two. Oh, I forgot name table, probably. Yeah, there we go. You were right, my pie. I don't know why I ever questioned you. Breaks our theme debugger. I see. Wow, that's not safe work. Did you read the Linux programming interface? No. <laughs> now it says, oh no, he's using classes. This looks like it's going to become oopy. Damn the mini file activists. Uh, so it's not, it's just a data class. It's just basically a data class. It's not, it's not object oriented. I promise. I promise. Um, okay, got that, 618. Oh, we should still add this function, but um, we'll eventually factor it out. Yeah, yeah, we're still, we're still watching. Scope, scope, which returns a style. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Shodron? Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. You're parsing some kind of CSS? Uh, kind of. Uh, I'm building it's similar to css but it's how the highlighting works for this text editor this is actually my own text editor that i've written from scratch and we're changing how the highlighting works right now or i'm i'm building a demo of how the highlighting should work and then i will apply it to the text editor uh, that way i don't break the text editor while i'm using it um but we're gonna change the lookup from right now it does this like n cubed lookup but we're, we've switched it to a try instead which should be a bit faster. Um, and it's prefix matching. Oh, but we have to do this ugly uh, multi-stage lookup in this scope thing. Uh, oh, this is the wrong class. 
should be down here. Four, uh, four. This is going to do lots of copies, so it's going to be pretty slow for this initial pass, but then we'll we'll make it faster. Uh, the problem is this style object is immutable, and so every time we run this apply here, it's going to be creating a new copy over and over. That's going to be not great. But we could do it... We could split out, where is style two? Up here, yeah. We could split out this merge into just working on dictionaries and that would be faster. Uh, so we'll just have it do side effects instead. Which I don't like, but This is doing a copy also. <laughs> oh, we could do it this way. Or adder in self dot, what is it? Python 3 names tuple. Is it fields? I think it's fields. There we go. <clears throat> Is Bambi going to have RCs? What does that mean? What, what do you mean, Warnacki? Also, hello, hello, welcome back. Um, release candidates. Yeah, eventually. Um, there's currently a release candidate of it on <laughs> PyPI, but it's it's version 000. It's real, real old. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. here so it works better as dictionaries just to avoid a million copies <clears throat> can't wait to try well you can always install from github that's uh that's one option um but yeah you should probably wait until it's more stable <laughs> where am i doing oh Well, there's a stay, stray princey here. That's why we all sort of all sorts of messed up. Okay, we'll have this apply to this dictionary here. C complex. Hello, hello. 
Wait, haven't I seen you in a chess stream? Oh. Are you guys fans of chess? I'm garbage at chess, but I have played it before. <laughs> there was a chess club in my high school, and I think I went for two of the meetings. One of them was just so I could get my photo in the yearbook for it. <laughs> and like, they were like, go ahead, play, play a game of chess. And somehow I won, <laughs> which I definitely shouldn't have because I was pretty garbage, but... Um... You know, it was fun. Good old high school. Uh, I felt bad because I was playing my best friend and I won in like 12 moves. And he's like, he like actually plays a lot of chess. Uh, he has this app on his phone that he's like constantly updating games and, and playing. Why do I have a syntax error? Oh, because we never implemented this. If part not in node, then we will break. Otherwise, we have a plot. We'll apply all the styles to it. Otherwise, uh, node dot style dot overlay on style. Hmm. <clears throat> You have Ken Ken, who's better? Uh, I'm definitely better at Ken Ken than he is, but he should be way better at chess than I am. Then supported right operand type for in theme tri node. 185. Uh, should be children. The updates. Oh, F dicts does not have does not have contains. Incompatible return type for type. Got dictster any expected style. I'm 193. You are correct. Argument one to theme has incompatible typed dictster object expected style. 244. Oh yes. Uh, argument one to style has incompatible typed dixter object expected color. Shush. <laughs> you happy now? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. 641, okay, this is all the theme stuff. Can fix at least this one. But these are going to be annoying. So we don't we we lose all the selectors. So we might kill this function too because oh well, tell with it. Uh, too much thinking in ten minutes plus chess. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like how you got both of the the love blonde left and right C complex. It's pretty good. <laughs> Sarcastic Dante says, "Is this Nano?" Uh. Hmm. Yeah, it's basically Nano. You've got all the features there. It's uh, it's just adding characters to the screen. Definitely. Key, the delete key. Just exits, I see. Okay. Cool. You probably want to use git wch. By, by the way. <laughs> okay. So this very much does not work. And why does it not work? Um, so, because I put a quote here. <clears throat> hey, it works. Um... It's slower though, maybe. Let's see, it took 1.1 seconds. This should be slower because I didn't actually implement any optimizations yet. It's still, it's doing n squared work now instead of n cubed. Oh, I guess get ch is using w get ch. No, there's two functions. There's w get ch and get w ch. So there's yeah, there's w get ch and then there's get w ch. And there are two separate functions. <laughs> they do very different things. For dumb reasons. Yeah, I know, you're using a, a wraparound cursors, but underscore w get ch is going to be this function. Probably not this function. And the return values are very different, unfortunately. Let i equals unsafe w get ch. <laughs> Is this a different playlist? No, this is the same playlist. We haven't gotten to the drop song yet, though. No. Uh, but that's that's where we're at in the playlist. Oh, it is faster. Okay. It's, it's about, you know, 100 milliseconds faster, which... Makes sense. We got rid of one of the ends. Yeah, these are the times with the new one. And we can actually profile this and show. Show the improvement. Okay, so before. Before we were spending 20% in select, where, where is, where is select? Oh wait, now we're spending more time in select? What? <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. We went from 18% in select into 25% in select. Uh, we're, all, we're also not caching this function. I bet if we put a cache on that, it will just suddenly be way faster. That's probably the difference. Oh wait, well, I don't understand how it's faster, but more time. What's this flowchart thing? This is the tri node. This is the the data structure. This this data structure here is this chart here. Um, it's also slightly explained in this uh, <laughs> shitty MS Paint drawing that I had here. 
Uh, but basically, the way I'm I'm doing syntax highlighting right now is three phases. One is tokenization. Two is a linear scan of all the rules in the theme, and then the third phase is taking that representation of these like theme settings and then turning it into the output. Uh, the output representation. So for terminals, it's terminal escapes, and for curses, it's the curses adder stuff. Um, but VS Code turns this theme into a try and then applies the try while it's tokenizing. So it goes from being, um, you know, minus n cubed, <laughs> converting to a try. So I'm only doing, then I would only be doing, well, I'd still be doing my three phase thing, but instead of this being n cubed, I can make it n squared by making it a try. And then by pushing the try into this over here, it can become uh, a linear lookup and save a bunch of memory. Is the plan. Uh, but yeah, let's see what changes after we cache it. Yeah, it's way faster after, after we cache it, which makes sense. And now, if we look at the updated one. Yeah, select is now 2% of the time instead of 20. So that's 10, 10x faster. Um, and it's still like, you know, can can go way more zoomy than that. But that's, that's already huge. That's already like a, you know, 40% improvement. Uh, the question is, is it correct? <laughs> We saw the diff looked right. Diff looks fine. Rust looks fine. We're skipping some of the rules. We need to implement the the parent mode, but we are we already weren't implementing the parent mode in the old code. Actually, Rust looks really good. I feel like no, there's something wrong here. Yeah, there's something wrong here. These colors are not quite right. They're different than these colors over here. Like the black is blacker. Uh, it looks right except for the background. I don't know why the background is wrong. Uh, but we can fix that. I actually kind of like the darker background. It's like actual black and actual white instead of this like muted black and this greenish color. It kind of it kind of pops. It looks kind of good, but it's a bug, so we got to fix the bug. But this looks right, except for f strings, which oh, this is different. Oh no, that's just because the background is different. Except for f strings, f strings is, should still be busted. High contrast can take a bug. It's not a bug; it's a feature. No, no, it's it's definitely a bug. Um, let's figure out why it's a bug, though. I personally feel that the dark gray is easier on the eyes long term than just the standard black. Yeah, you're probably right. It is definitely probably easier on the eyes. Um, I just, like, compared to this, this pops way more. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, makes sense because it's broken. Uh, where would that code be? It's probably in the default lookup, so we're probably doing this code here wrong. Uh, so we gotta look at this. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Right here. This is our problem. <clears throat> so that should fix that. Default. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Now it's the right value. Um, question is, how do we make this continue to work? Uh, demo slash theme slash horizon. Namespace object has no attribute syntax -ter. Oh, it was already broken? Huh. <laughs> 
Well, this has been broken all along. Okay. I guess we can just delete that code then. Because <laughs> it's broken. Uh, okay. Get rid of the subparsers. Only eat that code into the sun. Cool. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> but now these will be broken. But they're easy to fix. That one I fixed. PowerShell fixed. Curses is. We got rid of that code, so we're gonna delete that. And we'll fix this one too. Actually, while I'm at it, let's put the debug code into all of them. Oh, we're not using Nano. What am I doing? We're not using Babby. Fix that. Oh, the coloring doesn't work. Uh, let's add bash. Let's add bash uh, coloring, I guess. Uh, dpackage dash l code grep syntax grep bash. Shell unix bash dot tm language. CSON. Fortunately, we have a CSON converter. <clears throat> Press Y, then refresh, then shorten this to eight character SHA, then click raw, then grab this. Where is the code for that? Oh shit, we lost that. Fortunately, I am the Git wizard, and I can retrieve it. Files back now. We're all, we're all good. Uh, syntax shell. Fuck. That's not what I wanted. I want this guy. see if this works. Hey, it's kind of shell-like. Cool. Um, what do we want to grab here? This. <clears throat> you should do tuto uh, tutorial on Git magic. Okay, let, let me explain what I just did. Um, so there's this uh, command, um, <laughs> which until somebody pronounced it out loud, uh, in my head, I read it as reflog, <laughs> like you're you're being flogged again for running this command, uh, but it's it's actually reflog, and Git keeps track of every commit and uh, every action in a repository if you have reflogging turned on. Um, I don't remember how to turn it on. I don't know if it's on by default. I think it's on by default, but I could be wrong. But you can see here, like all of all of the commit actions that I took here all show up in the reflog. And until you garbage collect Git, all of these will be available locally. Uh, and so you can you can find branches that you've deleted in the past and stuff like that. So I happen to know in this case that I rebase squashed the old version of the highlight branch. And that's, that's what I did here. And I knew that this last, uh, well, actually, this, well, either of these commits are the same now that I look at it. Uh, either of these commits would work. These are both the squash of all of these branches. And I knew that this contained 
uh, the, the old highlight branch contained the code that I was looking for. So I grab this SHA, and then you can do git show to show that commit. And so this is the entire diff of the old highlight branch. And then I knew that I wanted to find the file that was in the bin directory. So I did git show with dash dash bin or dash dash space bin. So this is only look at the files in this location. And then I use git apply to take this patch and apply it to the current working directory. And then that was how I got this file back. So. <laughs> I didn't really explain it well, but I, hopefully that kind of shows what was going on. Um, but yeah, these are these are like little tips and tricks I've picked up along along uh, along the many years of, of programming. Is uh, let's delete that. Now that has support for this. We're gonna delete that file, and the rest one we can also add there. Oh, interesting. It was faster the second time I parsed it or I pasted it because it was cached from the other file. It's kind of an interesting side effect. Weird. It makes sense. It's just like kind of strange. Demo Python curses. Okay, so now we can do debug equals one with this file here. And yeah, the debugger crashes when you uh, do that. And Rust works, and the Python one works, and it's faster. Uh, so this is not the complete thing that I wanted to do here, but I think this is good enough to commit for now, and we can actually apply this. Why did that go so fast? Definitely crashed. <laughs> oh, unrecognized arguments. Yeah. So we got rid of this. Yeah, so it's definitely faster. Uh, so we, I think I'm gonna apply this change to the other, uh, to the actual editor, and then we'll go through the actual, you know, true optimization of this bit. Actually, maybe I should implement the parent node stuff first. <laughs> Brett Miller IT says, the only way to learn Git properly is by messing up badly and having to unfuck your mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good way to put it. Um, but actually, we do have a uh, kind of thing that we can fix here already. Um, skipping parent scope. It's weird that the diff only produces... Oh, I know why. Wait, no, I don't know why. Because I thought the Python one printed more than this. Oh, I'm using a different theme. That's what it is. This theme has more stuff. Uh, okay, because this one uses dark plus, but this one just uses normal dark? Question mark? Yeah, this one just uses normal dark. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, let's... let's um, Let's try and do this parent rule stuff. How would that even work? Uh, how would that even work? Um, we know all of the scopes we've looked at so far, so we could do set there i guess hey what's up dear watson thank you for the follow welcome to the stream um did they talk i don't know if they talked about this in their article let's see if they talk about it in their article if there's a parent scope meta oh they're talking about this thing here var identifier if there's a parent scope meta, set the foreground to three, font style to bold, otherwise set foreground to two and font style to bold. Okay, so that's how it picks that there. What about multiple parents? Public, lead, public read only parent scope list element. Hmm. 
Oh, it looks like they keep track of the scope, even though <laughs> there's kind of no reason to. And they encode all of their data as numbers. I guess I can make this bigger so you guys can see it. There we go. <clears throat> C Complex says, yeah, I'm not, I'm still not feeling very comfortable with Git. At this point, I should intentionally create a mess and work my way out on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that would be a, would be a solid approach. Get this so we can see it. That's good enough. Uh, okay, so they represent their parent as a list of these things. We would use a tuple, but... That's fine. Best thing is you can do it locally and then blow it away after. Yeah, <laughs> you can't really practice that on like SVN or Mercurial. The shit you do there is permanent. I guess, wait, Mercurial is distributed. SVN is not though. So you could, you could do it in Mercurial as well. Um, parent selectors. To make things a bit more complicated, Dexmake the themes also support parent selectors. Here are some examples using simple selectors and parent selectors. Again, sorted by their rank. The third kind of selector, one that involves excluding scopes, which we will not discuss here. We didn't add support for this kind, and we've noticed it's rarely used in the wild. Well, if VS Code doesn't support it, uh, why would I bother? <laughs> so we're probably not going to implement exclusion. The most annoying thing about Git is origin slash master and origin space master. Some commands use the first one and some use the latter. Man, Git, Git's internal consistency is horrible. It's so bad. Things are so confusing. Everything is super different everywhere. I wish it was all the same. I totally feel you on that one, Sarcastic Dante. And I feel like I just have to like memorize all the differences all the time. And like, there's so much mental overhead of like, does this one take slashes? Does this one take spaces? Who knows? Find out in the next episode. But like, damn. I wish Git would have gotten that better. Okay, um, I also realized that our tests are busted. Wait, what? Oh, my tests are passing because this function still exists, but nothing calls it. All right, we got rid of this code. And we got rid of selector. <laughs> now we have style and style too. Um, style two should get a new name. Style two, style two, partial style. Hey, exactly 80 characters. That's what we like to see. Okay, that looks good. Um, Did I just break it? No, it still works. But now the test should fail. Which is fine. Uh, Brett Miller IT says, I mean, they introduced get switch. Now nobody will use it because checkout is ingrained. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, get switch is like brand new. So it's fine to not know that it exists. It's 
like I can get 2.24. This one. Alright, do they explain when it was created? <laughs> this command is experimental. Behavior may change. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, I know how to use checkout, so I'm not, I'm not gonna use kit switch. <laughs> hey, what's up, Mindful Fox? Um, I don't remember that the name of that Pokemon. <laughs> I've not played enough of the new games yet to recognize it. I know it's the grass starter that no one likes. It's like Grocky or something like that. Grookey. Uh, Galar. Grookey. Okay, maybe I do know the name. How about that one? Uh, is it Zorua or is it Zorark? Or is it not a new one? Or is that the foxy one that I caught? <laughs> I don't know, it kind, it kind of looks like Zorua. It looks like this little guy. But I could be wrong. <laughs> this shiny is so dope. Such a good shiny. Oh, that's not in Gen. Is it not in Gen 8? Oh no, this is the... Oh, Sun and Moon. Uh, what is the Sword and Shield Pokedex called? Maybe it's not in Gen 8. No, I don't know. Pokemons, though. <laughs> <laughs> you what, mate? <laughs> that's a good emote. Uh, what are they doing? Oh yeah, parent selectors. And fixing the tests. But yeah, <laughs> it's amazing how much faster that is just because we switched the code around. Uh, we still haven't even done the, the full optimization. It's still doing, um, I think like one full loop of extra work. But we do some caching that they don't do, so. That's probably the difference. And actually, caching is probably fast enough. Actually, we could do some dynamic programming, guys. <laughs> Just died a little. Um, yeah, because we can divide and conquer on this code here. <laughs> Dynamic programming, guys! But it would actually make the code slower here. Um, would it, though? It might make the code slower. Maybe we could try and find out. There's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> yeah. So the dynamic programming of this is style equals self dot select. Sorry. If if not scope return self dot default. Otherwise, so that's our termination condition. Style equals self dot select self dot scope colon minus one and then uh, four part in scope at scope negative one Oops. Okay, <laughs> this is the uh, this the dynamic programming way to do this. Uh, how do you capture modifying keys in curses? It is a pain. <laughs> some the answer for most of, for some of them is you can't. Um. But. 
but normally what happens, so let's say I did like control Z for instance, uh, this is the return value that I get from WC, uh, get WCH, and then curses.keyname will tell you that it's control Z. Um, but like control shift Z produces the same result according to curses. Uh, control alt Z gives you a different thing, but, and control shift alt Z gives you the same thing as that. And this is alt Z. Um, <laughs> But the answer is, it depends. Uh, the heuristic that I use for detecting the alt key, which I think is the only one you can reliably detect, is you'll see the escape character. So this is what happens when I press escape. It's X1B. You'll see the escape character followed by the actual value. So this is alt followed by control Z. Um, the rest of them are just like, the, there will be actual key characters for them. So like this is control home, control end, this is home end, and this is shift home and shift end. Um, curses will have keys for some of them, but not for all of them. And if you can find a table that <laughs> that uh, is better than my table, uh, where does that live? Is it in screen? Yeah. I have a table where I've manually plotted out some of these escape sequences. Um, if you can find a better one than mine, then Good luck. Will that also capture Windows key and the menu key? Uh, no, because the Windows key triggers this. I wonder if like, oh, they probably all have mapping. <laughs> of course, uh, that logs out my session. And that's not my password. Oh, I should mute. Thank you, thank you. Hey, what's up, the calculator? Thank you for the follow. I guess we've learned that I should not press Windows key L. Um, I'm, I'm just not gonna press the Windows key. We're not gonna test that. I don't think there are any keyboard shortcuts that it captures with the Windows key, but I don't I don't really know. Uh, you also said the menu key. I don't think I have one of those on my keyboard. Oh, is this key? Yeah, this is the menu key. Doesn't get detected. Uh, does Alt F4 work? Right. <laughs> the calculator is working on tic-tac-toe. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, Spec says your editor is coming along. Indeed it is. Look at it. Look at it in its glory. It is, it is working. Um, let's see if the dynamic programming... That looks like it crashed. There's no way it got that much faster. Theme has no attribute scope. Yeah, it crashed. Uh, it should just be scope minus one. Oh, it also crashed. Unbound local variable node reference before assignments. So did it make it faster with dynamic programming? One, two, three, four, five. That one was super speedy. <laughs> uh, that one's probably just, it's probably just statistical luck though. Should probably be using average and not best of, even though best of is easier for me to look at it at a glance. One, two, four. Well, that one was super slow. See, max was 870. Max over here was 900. It might have been fast. It might be faster to do the dynamic programming. It certainly should end up with fewer calls and fewer duplicated or less duplicated work. So 
fine. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll leave the dynamic programming one, even though <laughs> it's dynamic programming. <laughs> Look at this sick DP, guys. <laughs> I'm using Babby to build Babby. That's true, yeah. Uh, I'm actually working on my highlight demo, which then will backport into Babby. And so then we'll, we'll break it as it's running. <laughs> it's the um, uh, fixing, what's this? Um, semi truck fixing it while running. There's like this GIF that's, um, no, this one? No. Uh, I saw it on Idiots in Cars like a while ago, but like they're 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 working on a truck while it's moving. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's what we're doing. What does dynamic programming mean? It's a fancy word for caching, basically. Uh, the idea is that. Uh, can we open two MS Paints? Yeah. The idea is that, like, say you're doing this block of computation of work. Um, if you can compute this block of work and then this result is always the same, uh, and then based on that block of work, you can also compute this block of work and then this block of work. Um, naively, if you called each of these individually, Brush. Like, say you did, say red was one call, and then orange was one call, and then yellow was one call, and then green was one call. You would do the sum of all of these squares of work. But with dynamic programming, you record the previous results and build up based on that. Um, so it would be just the maximum of these. So it would just be the, the total green square of work instead of all of them summed together. Um, it's kind of a, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a fancy way to say caching basically. Yeah. Memoization, same idea. Uh, but it's usually implemented, the way it's usually implemented is with recursion. So here, uh, my base case is just to return the default style. Uh, but otherwise I retrieve from the previous case, which gets cached using this decorator and then, uh, makes the rest of the computation less less work each time. How is that practical though? Um, in this case, it's practical because I'm building up based on the previous results. Uh, the fun part is I'm gonna throw all this code away because we're gonna, well, maybe I'll throw it all away. It depends how complicated it makes the thing. Uh, but the way Visual Studio Code does it is they don't even bother with this. They just do, they don't even do this here. They just build this each time. And so it's it's a lot faster. Um, oh, what was I doing? I was improving this, uh, which means I need to build an actual theme <laughs> to answer this because uh, it's no longer generic anymore. Um, Cash everything. Cash all the things. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much, Mindful Fox. Uh, usually High says, wait, are you actually coding in Nano? So, yes and no. <laughs> um, I currently have Nano aliased. I heard type Nano. I currently have Nano aliased to this thing called Babby. Uh, oh, Specs is heading out. Well, thanks for stopping by, friend. I'll see you around in the future. Uh, I currently have Nano alias to Babby. Babby is my text editor that I'm working on. Uh, but normally, I do use Nano. And in fact, if we do Babby this, it will open up Nano. Um, should I include Babby in my resume? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when people include like Vim and, and Emacs on their resume, uh, I'm going to include Na Babby and Nano. It's going to be it's going to be great. Um, yeah, Babby is my own text editor that's kind of a, a nano clone. But I do actually use nano to, to develop code. And now I'll be using Babby. Uh, Babby. Babby is better than nano. But, and it's, 
it's actually something that looks nice now, so I'm, I'm like super excited about about Babby being real. Sarcastic Dante included Emacs on his resume. <laughs> True. I don't think I included. I don't think I put text editors on my resume. I also don't think I put technologies on my re resume either. I also ran out of space on my resume. Crumble, crumble. Uh, what am I doing? You're never gonna get hired with that on your resume. <laughs> Uh, I think only Babby should be used to develop Babby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, I probably can do it that way. Um, how would I do that, though? The problem is, like, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to break it while it's driving, you know? <clears throat> Usually, High says, you're taking it to the next level. People using text editors saying IDs are overkill, but you're using just nano, right? <laughs> um... What was I doing? Oh. Yeah, we're gonna try and implement parent rules, but first I wanna adjust my tests so that we actually show that the current code is working. Uh, so we need to actually build a theme. <laughs> um, which will have you know, all the elements that a theme has. Which starts with colors and foreground. Uh, we're just gonna give them like nice numbered things so that it's easy for us to write assertions here. Foreground and background, and then token colors is our list of rules. And we have several scopes in there. Scope. Return the output speed of the terminal. On Windows, it simply returns int max. <laughs> nice. Uh, usually, high says, legitimately, do you not miss some of the functionality an ID or code editor gives you? Not really. Um, I think the biggest thing is like linters, but Nano has linters. Babby doesn't yet, but it will soon. Um, I think that's most of what I miss is is linting integration. The problem with IDs and text editor and like GUI editors for me is they're slow to do context switches, which significantly slows down my progress on stuff. Oh, this needs to be map map thing. Uh, scope will be a string, and then it will have a settings map. Uh, and settings has a bunch of things in it. Where are the bunch of things? Okay, we just use foreground. Oh, it's gonna be really annoying. Let's just do one followed by zeros. Although I still have to count out the zeros. Ugh. Okay, so we're gonna make a bunch of these rules and that's replacing this down here. Far, we're not going to do the minus one. We're also not going to do this because it'll be a code. Also, doesn't implement that one. And we'll do a wildcard selector. That one, I believe, is actually implemented by VS Code. Oh no, I don't think this one's implemented either. Oh, whatever. <laughs> we're not going to implement that one either. <laughs> but that's fine. We didn't. I don't think we actually did in our uh, thing here. So the empty string scope should get us this. Unknown scope should also get us that. Foo.bar should get us 
Uh, what is food at bar? Three. Uh, food at baths should get us two. This should get us... Food at bar was three. One, two, three, four, five. Does this fit on one line? Hey, fits on one line now. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. This is scope, but not the last one. Also food at bar. That one probably doesn't fit on one line. Yeah. It's fine. Then we need to actually do this thing. Making a theme is kind of clunky right now. Uh, let's make another... Let's make another method here for making a theme. actually put the variable here. I think we used the word data for that. So I need a tempter. <clears throat> actually we can just do theme dot from dict. Select scope insert ret dot foreground is equal to color dot parse expected. Highlight import theme. We also need color. That's it. Oh yeah, we don't have plenty. Uh, coding too fast, ID can't keep up. I do get it though, it can be frustrating sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Sparky asks, will Babby be able to use plugins slash extensions? Eventually, soon. Uh, it doesn't have any stuff for that yet because it, it barely works. I mean, it works, but it, it barely works. Uh, but yeah, I will eventually have nice stuff like that. Brett Miller IT says, going to bed. Cheers for the stream. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully I'll see you around in the future. Uh, okay, but let's see if these tests work now. The answer is no. The answer is no. It's because I'm missing a comma. I'm missing a comma again. Oh, that's obnoxious. That's really hard to see the actual results. Um, left shifted by how much? They're 32-bit colors, so they're shifted by 8 bits, so this would be 16.
prefix match failed. So foo.baz should have matched. Uh oh, this didn't Z fill how I expected it to. Oh, we don't need to Z fill, it's fine. Hex handles that for us. So we matched this one. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> The test is just garbage. Okay, cool. Uh, the calculator says, what's a keyboard warrior? I don't know the answer to what a keyboard warrior is. <laughs> Soon TMing intensifies. <laughs> Love it. Oh, that's good. Okay, cool. So these tests all still pass, which is just dandy. Uh, but this isn't used yet, so we need to make that work. Uh, this selector also isn't useful to differentiate. Let's do that. Um... Let's actually commit what we have right now. And get rid of this print. We know we, need, we know we need to implement parent scopes, but I think we can port this into Babby and make Babby faster. Move to a try based lookup for theme. Uh, highlighting a generator is no longer used. Sick. <clears throat> Move to a try based lookup for theme. Nice. The calculator says, I've never seen a dictionary in a dictionary. It's like embedded. Oh, you mean in the tests? Yeah, this is actually representing the same JSON structure that you would see in a um, TextMate theme. Um, config babby theme. Uh, so you can see, like, this is the Visual Studio Code dark theme. Uh, and you can see, like, this colors mapping is the same as this colors mapping here. And then the token colors is, like, all of the lists of rules. <clears throat> uh, but actually, we can just... We can change this one to ah, because we're never going to actually use that rule. means we should probably change these to not have a gap. And that means we need to change all of our tests as well. Two, three, two, two. Hey, what's up, Danalock100? Thank you for the follow. Hope your day's going well. Mine's going pretty well. We didn't actually use this in a test yet, but we will soon. Once we once we implement parent selectors, I actually don't know how parent selectors are going to work at all. They seem a little bit complicated. Hey, what's up, Manuel nine x nine or nine eight nine x? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, do we push? No, we didn't. Okay, push that up. And now we get to apply the same patch to Babby, which will make Babby ever so slightly faster. Uh, actually, we, we set improved it by like 40%, so it's a pretty significant faster. And are we gonna edit the car while it's driving? <laughs> uh, do we 
want to edit the car while it's driving? What could go wrong, right? Well, we can start by moving this to its own file. Oh, control space is not implemented in, in Babby. In Nano, control space is the same as control arrow key. And then control shift space, is that not a thing? Oh, that's, <laughs> we have to use Babby to get Nano. Control space is jump by word in nano. I guess I can add that, but eh, it's not that important. I'll probably unlearn that myself. Uh, Isaac says using the default Cython or PyPy. Uh, this is Py. This is C Python. So no, no acceleration. It's just uh, just normal normal Python. Uh, <clears throat> Using nano on Windows is fun. Yeah, I've used nano on Windows. Uh, Git bash, there we go. Ooh, nano on Windows. Uh, well, I guess that's less true. Oops, I should actually use command.exe. Uh, and maybe Babby will eventually work on Windows, but it's, it's not at all a priority, so I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't even tried it. I could do like PD curses and do some other stuff and like make that kind of work, but uh, haven't even started to try and get Windows to work, so it doesn't. That's fine. All right, here's where it gets dangerous. We start <laughs> we start breaking things. By deleting the code as it's running. Okay, it still works. Okay, <laughs> still worked, it's good. Uh, we didn't break it while I was running. If I do break it, I can switch to nano, I guess. <laughs> The calculator says Ubuntu color overwhelm. This is not actually the Ubuntu colors, although you can see it in a little bit of the scroll bar over here. Uh, hey, what's up, Suki Laddam? Hello, hello. Look, look, the babby, it highlights. It works. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's wild. Okay, so we're actually looking at this patch here and applying it piecemeal. Okay. We got rid of this, but that's fine. We'll keep that in the curse in the in the Babby implementation. We got rid of selector. Uh, actually, we should commit this. Well, we're just amending it in, I guess. <laughs> Thank God for Precommon Oaks. <laughs> All right, so I'm not actually gonna delete selector because that would break the that would break the bus while it's driving. So we're gonna keep this code, even though we're going to delete it. Uh, then we're going to write our new code above it. 
What could go wrong? Everything. Use some fancy regexes to do this automatically. Optional backslash one. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> okay, then we need these functions, which we write out one character at a time. Okay, we can save that. Now we need our try node. Marco says, damn, first round of pre command on my flask apps gets the migrations fixed. So it's not that I only forgot the trailing line in the end of the files. Tools do that too. Yeah, um, the usual suggestion if you're using like uh, SQL Alchemy migrations is to exclude them from pre commit. Um, you, can, you can do that uh, at two levels. So I usually suggest excluding at the top level for migrations. So there's a top level exclude regex, and so you can just do exclude colon migration slash, and that'll get rid of that directory. Um, is my usual suggestion on that. But you can do you can do it however you want. I just find that like uh, linting auto generate code usually sucks, and so it's usually not worth fixing. I know. Why is this a partial style? Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Children is an f dict of stir to theme try node. Need the building code, which is actually pretty simple. And then we need our new theme. <laughs> Gonna have two themes at the same time. Last theme named tuple. Uh, rules is a theme try node. And then we have the same select function, so we're just keeping the same API as before. And then we have our loading function, which is all sorts of intermixed. Uh, that sucks, because it looks a lot like the old loading function. Bummer. <clears throat> I pip installed the Babby, but the code is not highlighted. Yeah, I haven't uploaded the uh, the current version of PyPI. Um, also, you need to set up a couple of files if you're doing a first run of Babby. The first one is to run bin download syntax. Uh, this will put the syntaxes. I should probably put some printing in there. Mm. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Syntax dot name so you need to run that and you need to set up a vs code theme at tilde config babby theme uh, mine happens to be a symlink so that's what you need to do to get syntax highlighting working oh also you need to pip install oniguruma cffi and you need to be on the highlight branch <laughs> It's it's not quite ready yet. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of missing parts that I need to get actually working. Uh, is this where we're working from? Yeah, I think so. Okay, this is gonna be a mess, but that's fine. Maybe I should just copy this method out of the source. I think that makes more sense. So this is theme, the new theme. Not the old theme, the new theme. Grammar stuff. There we go. That. <laughs> you have to watch it draw it one line at a time. 
which is definitely a, a like bug, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I know it's dumb, but I, I kind of like it. Okay, what else do we change here? I think the rest of it is just deleting the code. And we moved fdict. And we deleted all this shit. Okay, so the first check is does it open like that? And it does. So now if we delete the old theme, does it just work? Does, does the bus keep running when we delete this code here? Oh, interesting. Probably need this function. Defaults. Seems to be color. I can get rid of this now. Maybe. Maybe I should call it blank instead of default. Because that's what I call it elsewhere. And then. <laughs> Then I'll port this over to the other file. Yeah, we're just bouncing back and forth as I come up with better ideas. Uh, style dot blank. Uh, this goes away, right? Because we have our select up here. Oh, uh, we still need the color mappings. Right. That's gonna be broken. <laughs> okay, Babby's broken. <laughs> we broke it while I was running. It's fine. Um, let's see. It wouldn't be hard to fix SQL Alchemy to add the additional line at the end of the file. Uh, oh, why is it doing that for the large paste? Because uh, I've done no performance optimization. So any character entry does a full re-render of everything. And a full re-render, you can't really notice it when you're like typing code. Uh, but when you splat a huge chunk of code, you can notice it pretty easily. Uh, the calculator says, so you're trying to theme your Nano to look like Ubuntu or... Uh, so this is a Visual Studio Code theme. Um, it's, it, in fact, if I code highlight demo, actually it would be code babby babby highlight.py. If we open up Visual Studio Code with the same file, it'll look the same, basically. There'll, there's some slight differences because I have some bugs, but we'll get them eventually. But yeah, you can see like, it basically looks the same as Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm basically implementing full theming support for my text editor. <clears throat> Siku Adam says, I still have a habit to wait for virtual M. Uh, for a couple seconds to set up an environment when I set up a new project. Yeah, you and me both. Um, the stuff that Gabber's been doing has been chef kiss amazing. It's so fast now. Um, it's, it's really great. Calculator says, I used to have Windows, but after spilling wine on my $1,000 Razer laptop, I moved to a Mac. Wait, wouldn't that be more expensive? Wouldn't a Mac be more expensive than a Windows machine? Um, uh... 
Clementino says, hi, sorry for the off topic. What smartphone do you use? Uh, where is my smartphone? I mean, you're assuming I use a smartphone, right? Uh, I do use a smartphone. I had a dumb phone for the longest time, though. Um, but this is my Galaxy S7 Edge. It is a shit phone. It has cracks on the back. Uh, right there. I don't know if you can see, but whatever. Um, I've dropped my phone a total of one times in my entire life, and it was while I was waiting in the line at the DMV, and the one time I drop it, it cracked the screen. Well, it cracked the back screen, and who really cares about the back screen? But yes, and it's it's an Android phone. It's kind of old. I need to get it replaced. What's up, Yabcat? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. But yes, it runs Android. I'm not paying those those Apple suckers for anything. <laughs> Although I have an iPod. But I got that, like, super discounted from school, so I don't feel so bad about that one. Shit. This one is, uh... Is pr is problem? Uh, what's the next Android? Are you thinking? I don't know. Um, I have not done any research on shopping for phones yet, so I, I need to do that. But I, I really haven't had time to do it. Unfort unfortunately. Um. Okay, but I can change this color mappings. We really need to build this. This is how one of the things that Visual Studio does. That's nice. Uh, but yeah, it maps colors to integers. Um, so we need colors will be an f dict of color to int and color pairs. Color Paris will be an f dict from tuple color color to int. Um, a pixel? That might be a, a good choice. I've heard good things about the pixel. Um, I've, I've heard good things. Uh, someone at work has, or well, a bunch of people at work have pixel. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't really thought about that. Yeah. But I'm actually going to go get a drink of water because I am out. Uh, so I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> or go away here. You can, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but I will be right back. I'm going to go grab some water. So here's my BRB screen with the Pythonic. I'm back! <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Um, let's see. So, I was thinking about it while I was grabbing my drink. Um, as long as I keep this open, I can still like show that it's broken over here. Uh, 
So like this should be broken right now. Yeah. Syntax error. Positional argument follows a keyword argument. Well, we can fix that one pretty easily. We just gotta not close this. <laughs> Missing five positional arguments. Line 89. Oh, these should all be equals none. Ugh. Uh, hey, what's up, Geek Explorer? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. 14 is greater than 217. I mean, in lines of code, you're probably right. I'd much rather have uh, smaller, smaller lines of code. 14 because 1 plus 4 equals 5. But 2 plus 1 plus 7 equals 10, and 1 plus 1 equals 1, and 5 is greater than 1. I mean, yeah, if you have <laughs> arbitrary rules like that, then sure. Uh, oh no, I have to sneeze. No, why are you sneezing? Oh, and it's gone. And it's gone. Uh... Shoot. So computing the colors before used to be really easy. But now it's a lot more work. Um... Well, uh, we need to figure out a way to do that. <laughs> Could have clipped the sneeze, yeah. That would have been some solid clip right there. Just me sneezing over and over and over. <clears throat> Be great. Well, let's see, we have to record all the foregrounds and backgrounds. I guess we can do that in this loop here. Well, in this loop here? Yeah. Calculator asks, have you ever made a bootable USB drive with Ubuntu? Yes. I've also done that with Windows. No, oh, this is not quite right. Or at least we will allocate more colors than we need. Let's skip that. And... This is tricky. Oh, also this is broken. Need to continue here. <clears throat> Carlos Feduardo says, uh, Pretendo Estudiar Python, or en cuanto so... Oh, this is French, not Spanish, my bad. Uh, let's see. Wait, is it French? 
It looks like... Oh, it's Portuguese. Oh, I see. I was like, that character's not <laughs> not from Spanish. Um, well, well, we can... I'm just going to translate it, because <laughs> I don't know any Portuguese. You're Brazilian. Ah, I see. I intend to study Python. For now, I only make some scripts. What tips can I get to start? Um, so my tips will be in English. Sorry. Uh, my suggestion for learning Python would be to find a project that you want to work on, uh, like something that you will personally benefit from, and then build that. And uh, the reason I think this is kind of the best way to learn is you'll be motivated to you'll be motivated to learn things in order to produce your product. And I find that that makes me learn better. So I, I don't know, it might, might not work for you, but uh, it's it works pretty well for me. Um, so that would, that would be my suggestion. Uh, like for instance, this project that I'm working on right now, part of the reason that I wanted to start building it is I wanted to learn curses, which is a, a terminal thing. Um, and so you know, I've, I've learned quite a lot of curses as part of this project. <laughs> Marco says, or in other words, it works on my machine. Yeah. Uh, I have difficulty thinking about something. I can motivate myself when people tell me what they need. Mm. Oh, so you have like a hard time coming up with an idea. Yeah, that is honestly the hard part. <laughs> Uh, I don't really have, like, great advice there. Like, you could always do, like, cookie-cutter projects that, you know, aren't necessarily super interesting or useful. Um, you know, like, build Minesweeper or, like, Tic-Tac-Toe or, like, you know, you know, implement a small game that's well-known and, like, go through it, that like, that way. But I, know, I find that those are... I find that those are less interesting for me, personally. Um... So, our problem here is we don't have, oh, I guess we do have a point to do this at. This is fine. If foreground in rule settings, all fgs.n color.parse rule settings foreground. We'll do the same thing, but instead of foreground, we'll use background. And this will be all backgrounds. So that'll give us all of our colors here. And then, what do we need to build from that? We need to build two maps. User bin nano, because we need to look at this file. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's bin nano. Color mappings. Okay, so we start with this. equals self.defaults.bg map to zero and self.default.fg map to seven. And then So this actually was counting up colors, but we're actually gonna count down colors. not in colors. Colors.update 
color I for I in color or for I comma color in zip uh, curses dot colors well actually we need to know about the curses colors at this point we don't actually know their values <clears throat> Oh, I talk fast, so it's difficult to understand me. Yeah, sorry about that. It it happens. <laughs> I guess we can just use the same logic as before. Let's just do this. In zip. Color ID, all BGs, all FGs, if color not in colors. <clears throat> I should just keep this open. <laughs> oh, I, I type, wait, Tao's type. Oh, so fast, oh, cause I typed the code fast, I see. <laughs> oh, you can understand my English. All right, cool. Dope. Mm, I'm basically taking this code and moving it over here. Uh, and I'm building up colors and then color pairs for usage with curses. It's not self.default, it's default style. called pairs and then I think that works so we need colors and color pairs hey what's up Carlos Feduardo thank you for the follow welcome to the stream even though you've been typing in chat uh, Yamcat asks, what is your typing speed? Uh, we tested this on stream at some point, and when we did it on stream, it was like 119 words. Um, but, you know, probably probably doing it under pressure while all you guys are watching is probably not my ideal typing speed. Um, but I, I haven't tested it beyond that. But that's a pretty good ballpark, is like 120. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ursula Hamster? Welcome back. Marco says, you see, you type that block damn fast. I would say you could type 350 words from it. Yeah, when I pasted. Hey, hey, what's up? Is identical with the highlighted babby text. Uh, if he does a large paste, it'll be even more. Yeah, the pastes are kind of cheating.
Just moving these variables around so they minimize their scope a little bit. This function is pretty gnarly, but I think it's right. Uh, I can delete this. Adder. Still need this. Self dot pairs. Blank theme. Let's see, style equals style dot blank. So try, we should call this rules. That way it matches the thing. Rules, rules. Okay, style rules, f dict. I think that satisfies that interface. Uh, we're missing a friend. Are we in business? Self is not defined. On line 194, indeed it is not. And I see chat has moved, so I can talk to that. Let's see. Heavy as baby, yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you type how much wood would woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood as a test? Yeah, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? There we go. I did it. <laughs> I did it, mom. Uh, uh, was the fuzzy wuzzy was a bear? Fuzzy wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy wuzzy wasn't fuzzy wuzzy. No, he was a baldy waldy. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Check if a woodchuck, you have a typo instead of wood. Yeah, no, I did it right. I spelled woodchuck properly. Ursula asks, how are you, Anthony? I'm doing fine. Uh, I didn't go for a run today, but I biked instead. I haven't ridden my bike this year. Uh, but I've ridden the, the, the lift bikes, which are kind of shitty, but... Yeah, let me get the job done. Um, but I'm doing fine. I'm not tired. I'm uh, I'm excited about the uh, the changes we're making here. Uh, but yeah, that's how it's that's how it's going. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened here? That's a new one. I don't think I've seen this before. Theme has no attribute color mappings. Usually when it crashes, it like at least gives me a good trace back. But something's real messed up here. Uh, in its screen. Oh, because it doesn't tear down the screen properly. So this is all sorts of messed up. Uh, that's in a different file. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> We can't fix this one, unfortunately. Uh, Babby screen, in its screen. Um, Theme.colors and theme.pairs. FDict has no attribute items. This is what happens when you break the car while it's driving. Uh, Babby F dict. Uh, we also need. Well, actually, we can probably start running the type checker. That's probably a better way to do this. Commit run. Let's do this first. Uh, I didn't get a haircut. Well, how long has it been since you've. Since you've been on the street. <laughs> I haven't gotten a haircut in a while. I actually need a haircut. Well, I don't need a haircut, but I should probably get one because uh, I'm running my marathon in two weeks and 
you know, gotta go fast. <laughs> um... well, what did I type? What happened here? Some key combination that I pressed caused it to spit this out? I kind of want to know what it is. Is there like a shortcut for LS? It's like almost that I, it's almost like I pressed tab, but I didn't, ugh. The world may never know. What, what keys did I press here? <clears throat> um, bin nano, uh, oh, it was tab, I see. Okay. It wasn't control X, that, that doesn't do anything. Oh, it does. What is that key combo? <laughs> it was typing, then tab, then erasing. Well, I, I did this, and then and then I typed tab. But then I did Control X and then or Control C and then Control X and then something caused it. Is it Control X slash? It is. Control X slash. Apparently it's control X slash. <laughs> what about two millimeters all down? Oh, you mean like really, really short hair? Uh, I do have a photo of me with really short hair somewhere. Oh, where would that be? Um, backups. I think it was a phone photo. Would have been older than that. Not that year. It would have been in 2012? Uh, after there, maybe here? Phone pictures. Oh, uh, this might be old enough. No, none of those. It's not, oh, it would have been after that. 820, that would have been in August? That would have been not quite when I had gotten it cut. Maybe it is in the 2016 one. No. I don't know. I did get my hair cut really, really short at one point, but <clears throat> basically shaved my head. Uh, we could do that with a quickness. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I don't think, I don't know, my, my head is not greatly shaped, I think, when, when you cut it all off, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, what was I doing? Oh, uh, we are probably... I got distracted, right? I was editing that. Oh, I was fixing these errors. This file we can fix. From typing import set. I fix that one. Then nano babby screen.py. Undefined name colors. Okay, so then we can just uh, burn down the MyPy problems. Oh no! Oh no! We have to quit, because uh... We have to quit because I didn't implement that feature. So unfortunately we're going to be using Nano for a little bit. Until we fix everything. Unsupported operand 137. All right, we don't have contains. 
F contains self K T key, which is a bool and return K in self dot dict. I should fix that. Theme has no attribute pairs. Should be color pairs. That is broken. Uh, Textmate tests. Okay, this should be babby.highlight. Import color. And then, there's no attribute items. What is this type? <laughs> Real type is typing dot abstract set. Let's just do this instead. So I think that's close enough to the right value. From typing import iterable. <clears throat> tuple is not defined. From typing import tuple. Theme has no attribute pairs. And maybe we're back to functional now. Key error. Well, that's not good. Uh, it's keep control, strike X, and then release control and strike the forward slash at the same time. It works every time. Joey's Bites asks, is it pronounced tuple or tuple? I've heard it both ways. Um, I usually say tuple, but it can be either. It is personal preference. So what the fuck gives? Why are you not in that dictionary? And does this work? Probably not. Oh, it does. We can postmortem debug. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in this dictionary. What the fuck? It lives! Man, that was a, uh, a doozy. <clears throat> uh, Andrew Lane says, oh hi! Oh hi, Andrew Lane. How's it going? 
do, do you know me? Do you know that I say oh hi a lot? <laughs> and, man, that was one of those things that started out as a joke and like saying it ironically and now I say it unironically. It's the worst. Um, because, <laughs> uh, this coworker at, at Yelp who like, he's like, yeah, I have, um, a, um, realtor and she always answers the phone. Oh, hi. And, um, <laughs> he just thought it was so funny. And so we would put it in like all of our tests and stuff. And like, um, in fact, I think, I think some of them are like super popular on GitHub. This one has 4.3k stars. And I believe the tests print out oh hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> and um <laughs> Unfortunately, I started saying oh hi just like legitimately. Um so <laughs> I I got I got wrecked by that. That's that's my own fault. Uh, oh, you were watching me before, and I said, oh, hi, I see. <laughs> uh, you came from a Seek a Player raid. Oh, I'm not sure I'm familiar with them. Seek a Player. Although, if they raided me, I should probably remember them. Oh, they're streaming right now. Learning PHP, learning to code. Nope, there it is. Oh, didn't mean to turn the volume on. Maybe I raided them. Oh, they're part of... See... I don't know what's up with live coders. Should I become part of them? Uh, they're like a team on Twitch. I don't know what teams on Twitch mean. Um, more information can be found here. Live coding on Twitch. We're a group of broadcasters who write code and make things. That sounds like me, right? We believe that live video is an amazing opportunity to teach and want to share our expertise. You can find the team's homepage, and that's where I came from. <laughs> Circular links forever. Uh, partner affiliate, yeah, I have that. Politely answer questions, yeah, I do that. Positive, inclusive, and welcoming chat, I try and do that. Are a person, not a brand or company account. Uh, am I am I a person? Am I people? Uh, or are we dancer? No. <laughs> Regularly write code or make hardware with technology. That sounds like me. More info can be on the wiki. And then there's all these links. Uh, so how do I join? <laughs> I'll figure that out later. Seems like something that would be positive for the channel, maybe. <clears throat> Who cares about that? You're probably right, Sarcastic Dante. But, I don't know, if I can I get more people to watch me, then... I don't know be kind of cool uh <laughs> freedom dow says you're too nice anthony you're alien but also a person they found me out they got me <laughs> uh... okay cool so we put this in here um one thing that I wanted to test is to do uh, our perf log. Hey, what's up, Amet? Amet? How do I say this? Amet Merchugruel. Sorry, I butchered that. But thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, how's Babby? It's going well. Uh. This is Babby editing itself. It now has some nice, uh, some nice syntax. Some nice syntax how editing. It's working. Uh, it's faster than before. In theory. <laughs> Let's see. So this should still be kind of slow. And it still is. Um, but it's only 500 milliseconds to jump to the end. So that's not too bad. Let's see what it was before this patch. Let me make sure I made the patch first. Because <laughs> I don't want to redo all that work. Yeah, this looks right. Um... So, control ends. 
Yeah, <laughs> almost twice as fast. Uh, that's kind of amazing. I didn't really expect to make that much of a per performance boost there. Let's actually look at the the profiles for those. She prof to toss. This is the old one. This is the old one. And this was the function that we just spent a bunch of time optimizing, this select function, which was taking 25%. Uh, let's see what the new one looks like. So the new one should still be spending some time in select but considerably less. We now only spend 1% of our time in select, and we only make 58 calls to it, whereas before we made 321. And this is due to the, uh, the dynamic programming <laughs> causes it to, oh wait, no, these are self calls. It's still 336 calls to this versus 321, I see. This is it recursing on itself. <laughs> uh... A robot, what makes you think that? <laughs> right? Oh, hi. Oh, equals Ohio. Indeed. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Ohio became such a meme at Yelp that, like, everyone on the team would just say oh, hi to each other all the time. And <laughs> bless his heart, this, this one team member, I'm not going to mention their name, um, they didn't quite get the whole oh hi thing. Like maybe it was, you know, English as a second language or something. Um, but they they started saying oh hi <laughs> instead of oh hi. <laughs> and <laughs> oh man, sometimes I miss those guys. Oh, this is the song with the drop. Okay, I'm gonna bookmark this. How do I bookmark? That way, that way we know the drop song. This is. Here's here's the drop song for those who for those who care. <clears throat> oh, sarcastic Dante sent me a link. Yes, yes. Let's look at the link. Uh, purse an event item. This is an escape character meeting a control sequence. Oh. Okay. This looks a lot like, um, <laughs> this looks like a lot, a lot like my method for doing the same thing. Green. Uh, this function. So if it's an escape sequence, I have a, a loop that loops through characters. So it's very similar to that. They do some like special parsing though, it looks like. Uh, but this is like my alt loop. Interesting. Those are F keys, and this is a sequence. They... I think they have the same bug that I do, though. In that, like, if you mash characters real fast, you'll end up with the same uh, issue. Thank you, Andrew Lane, for the host. I assume you're just hosting yourself, though. <laughs> Which is fine. I appreciate it. Uh... Yeah, I have the same mapping as well. They're doing something different here. I actually have two separate keys for back end and back R. One viewer lol. Yeah, it's you. It's you. <clears throat> oh, I don't know where the split is. Uh, no clue about that, know how to reset my router, and that's it. <laughs> that's something. A lot of people don't know how to do that, too. Uh, Freedom Lao says, what is this tool? You mean the one of them editing, or this this tool back here? I guess we can talk about both of them. Um, this Babby tool is a text editor uh, that I've written from scratch. It, it does nice things. This output here is a profiling output that I generate in two ways. Uh, well, in a kind of a three-step process. Uh, perf 
Uh, so I have this performance. Oh, we should be using Babby. What am I doing? I have this performance logging uh, helper class here that does logging in two ways. Uh, one of them is event logging, where you get a file that looks like this, uh, which basically just has like the microseconds and the event that it ran, and the event is either startup or a key character. Uh, KN5 is control end, control X is, well, control X. Uh, but this spits out a pstats file based on C profiling, and then I use gprof to dot, which I'm actually using a fork of that thing. gprof to dot, because the upstream is buggy and they wouldn't take my pull requests because they're dicks, but that's their problem, not mine. Uh, but I'm using gprof to dot to convert the pstats file into a dot image, and then dot is a utility from graphviz that turns uh, text textual graphs into outputs, and it can output to like PNG, SVG, a bunch of other formats. Uh, but this is what dot looks like. Dot is basically, well, in this case it's digraph, and nodes map to, uh, nodes have numbers, and then edges are like this, and then you can attach styles to the particular uh, nodes. So that's what this is here, and that's how it gets the colors. Um, But yeah, and you can use this to generate these graphs. And the colors are relative to how much how much total time it's taking. <clears throat> uh, Multihex says, is that Rust? Yeah, Sarcastic Dante's link is Rust. Uh, Batiskev, hello, how's it going? Uh, how are you? What do you think about Tree Sitter? Many editors are switching to it. NeoVim will add it in the next release. Uh, I know, I should, I should support Tree Sitter. I should probably uh, rewrite all my highlighting code and use tree sitter instead. Um, it does seem cool. Uh, it has a lot of the same goals that the TextMate syntax has, but it's a different implementation, of course. Um, so I'll, I'll probably, you know, eventually support it. But for now, I think it, <laughs> I'm going to continue my work on the TextMate stuff until that works perfectly, and then maybe I'll. Uh, start start doing it, uh, or start implementing tree sitter later. But yeah, it does seem pretty cool. Um, but not not in the cards yet. Um, let's see, just in case someone opens my channel. True, true. Neckler, back in time for the drop. Yeah, you hit the you got the drop. I also linked it this time. But uh, I now have it bookmarked, so when Mindful Fox is next in the stream, I can. You show them the uh, the drop song because uh, they wanted the link. <laughs> dicks, yes, dicks. Ah. Upstream, downstream caused me a lot of problems in my community. I would rather have a flat level repo with consensus in the middle. Mm, I see. Yes. Uh, thank you really for sharing. That data is extremely valuable to my work. Uh, the the profiling data. Yeah, it's pretty good. Angelina says, not sure if this will help, but I'll send it anyway. Yeah, I'm already using LRU cache. Uh, in a couple places. I do actually need to reduce the number of places, so I, sh I should be able to get it down to like only one place caching. Uh, where are you cache? Uh, I will need that one. This one I should be able to eliminate. And this one I should be able to eliminate also. This one I want to keep. Actually, no, I'll be able to eliminate this one too. Uh, but I will also have this, and I will need to... I will need to keep that one. But uh, I'm not doing that approach yet. But yeah, this uh, this major uh, wait, did we get this passing? Yeah, we did. This this rewrite of the uh, theme selector made the performance way better. It used to so we can see that it used to spend twenty five percent of its time in this theme selection, and now it's spending one one point two seven percent of its time, which which is phenomenal. <laughs> that that made such a huge difference. 
uh, just by changing the data structures that I was using. Uh, no, I didn't break Babby again. This isn't a stack trace. See, it works. It's fine. Everything's okay. I probably typed nano just from muscle memory. The calculator says, why is it so hard to remember how to spell fifth? Uh, not making tic tac toe, making connect four. Why did I lie about that? Oh. <laughs> you know, but Babby works. Uh, but I, I think I typed nano just out of habit. Yeah. So, it's not actually broken, I just, <laughs> I just derped. Uh, but yeah, in this new one, our hot thing is mostly this, uh, the regex library, which is actually good. Because I can't, I can't make this any faster. This is necessarily going to be that slow. Hey, what's up, one camel? Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Uh... Wait a minute. <laughs> Why does this only spend 20% of its time in the actual search function? What else is it doing? Where's the rest of this going? So we have 242 milliseconds, of which 40 milliseconds is its own personal time. And half of that is this search function. Where's the other, where's the other? <laughs> 15%. 4% is in start params. And what else do you call? Oh, I guess it's all of these over here. 5% is in this. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. But anyway, I don't think I can speed up this function at all. Maybe a little bit with some like super micro optimizations, but I think this 40% is gonna stay. Um, but this would be the next on the chopping block to improve and we're still spending 2000 calls into this and we can probably get that down to a lot less than that. Um, but that one's hard. I need to refactor everything again for like the fourth time to, to do that again. <laughs> Uh, don't use regex. Well, the um, the syntax highlighting that I'm basing this on is implemented in regex, so it's kind of hard to. Freedom Dow says, Anthony, how hard would it be to fork Git into a more level system, possibly with voting? Is it worth saving Git code or just starting new? Do you mean like GitHub? Um, GitHub itself, or do you mean like Git the version control system? Because I, I don't know that the version control system would change under a model like that. I think you're just trying to change how pull requests work. Um, and like, it would be fine. Like there's, there's GitLab, which is kind of like the open source GitHub. And you can run your own copy and do whatever you want with it. Um, I, I don't think you would want to change the actual version control system. I think you would want to change the like, the, the social model of it, if you want to do something like that. Uh, voting like Garrett, yeah. Uh, Garrett does have a model for that, now that I think about it. Um, cool, okay. Uh, faster theme dot select using tries. Using a try. Not multiple tries, just one try. Uh, Batiskev says, I'm great, thanks. My laptop needs a battery replacement and I now understand how convenient your way of using VirtualBox is because I need to reinstall all my tools in another laptop instead of just copying the virtual machine, <laughs> right? Uh, well, at least another thing that I have that's going in that direction that's positive for me is I've automated all my setup. Well, most of my setup. Um, so I can just drop this repository on a new machine and just run, wait, why do I have two branches? Oh, I never finished this. This is actually, this branch is actually really cool. Is there any, show me how many commits are on it. Two ahead, okay, well, we can look at both commits then. Now with SSH eYAML. Yeah, so I made, <laughs> this is a left field tangent. Um, I wanna be able to store secret data in my repository such that I can provision Stuff with secrets. The actual. What is buzzing? 
on my phone. Must be an airplane. Uh, the actual use case that I wanted for this, and I never finished it, and this was February of last year. <laughs> um, I wanted to be able to encrypt data into this repository that only I could decrypt. And so I wrote this crazy Ruby package. Uh, Hira... Oh, I don't even remember what it's called. I haven't worked on it in a long time. I think it's Hira YAML eData SSH or something like that. My GitHub profile would load. Uh, it did load, eventually. Look at all my green squares! Ah, so many green squares. GitHub for me is pain. Everything is so slow. So slow. Uh, Hira. Hira EML SSH agent. This is what it was called. But I wrote this SSH agent encryptor thing. Uh, is this the implementation? I think that's the implementation. Yeah, this is just metadata. Yep. Um, and the way it works is it speaks to the SSH agent protocol and uses that to create a symmetric key and then uses that symmetric key to sign a blob or something like that? Oh wait, no, it signs a blob. I don't remember how it works. <laughs> But I ran it by somebody who does like actual crypto and they're like, yep, this is cryptographically sound. Uh, but anyway, it allows me to encrypt stuff and put it in here. I think this is just like um, Hello World or something encrypted, maybe something like that. But the plan was to use this to um, encrypt passwords for an IRC server, but I never did that. <laughs> I just forgot about it, but I'll get back to it some other day. Um, hey, how's it going, Viking Coder? Welcome back. Uh, we're doing well. Uh, Babby is still able to syntax out it, but now it's much faster. Uh, that used to take uh, a full second. Now it takes a half second to jump to the end. So big, big optimization there. Some big plays. Um, We'll actually be able to do some other stuff that's a little bit better there soon. That's pretty cool. Uh, Freedom Now says, Sarcastic well, we have a lot of problems with repos causing competitive and negative social interactions between team contributors. Man, I know that feel. I give a code review and somebody comes and talks to my fucking manager and it's like, piss off, dude. It's a code review. Like, if your code's bad, I'm going to tell you your code's bad. Like, that shouldn't reflect personally on you and you don't have to yell at me about it, but like, ugh. Anyway, that's something else. <laughs> uh, I've been struggling with this for some years. Uh, enough so I'll fork out some time or money to solve it. I see. Ursula Hamster says, it's hard to make money with free software, probably. It is pretty hard to make money on free software. I think I make like, I think I make like $200 a month on free software, which like is not that much. And I don't know. It's it's pretty it's pretty hard to be profitable there. I wish like honestly I provide enough software that I feel like I could, you know, pester large companies to be like, hey, sponsor me. Um, you use my free software, please. You know, throw me a bone. Um, I'm just like really bad at doing the the personal advocation stuff, and so I don't know. <laughs> and I I make not that much from Twitch either. I make enough to like buy beer, and that's about it. Um, how are you making money on it? So I'm part of Tidelift, um, which is a subscription-backed open source thing. Um, and one of the packages that I maintain is is uh, is um, funded through Tidelift. Um, Twitch subs, right? Yeah, that's how I make money. I don't. I make. I don't make nearly enough. I don't make $200 off Twitch subs. I think I make like 50 bucks a month or something like that. Um, it's not much, but I can buy beer with it. <laughs> That's basically what I do. My my Twitch money goes straight to beer. <laughs> Although I don't, I don't drink all that much, so. Master theme select. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is implement parent selectors. 
Actually, we backported something from this. What did we backport? Oh, we did style blank. Yes, we can do this again over here. Uh, class style. Where was that code? Here it is. Ugh. There we go. Nope. <laughs> That's what we get when we paste. That's always a risky character, or risky, uh, risky thing to do. Although, I don't think I ever have anything incriminating in my paste. And if I do, well, that'll just be a problem that we come to later in life. Uh, default equals color, or no, not color. Style dot blank dot as dict. Got that from the other one. Editing Babby with Babby. Indeed, Andrew Lane. Indeed. Uh, Microsoft poured money into our technology when no one else was. A free and open source software. Amazon and Google sure didn't want to have anything to do with us. Oh, do you work at GitHub? Uh, <laughs> or do you have another team that has a... Uh, that is funded by that. One Camel says, can I ask? So Babby is a text editor. Uh, what have you done or what are you doing when you're stuck somewhere because you don't understand how to code it? Um, yes, Babby is a text editor. Um, I very, I mean, I've learned a lot as part of building this. Um, there are a couple things that, you know, I'm quote unquote stuck on that I do need to like fix or improve. Uh, this is one example of, of a thing that I'm stuck on. Um, there's a, there's a race condition where if I press characters too quickly, let's see if I can trigger it. Um, how did I trigger it before? Oh, clearly not by doing that. <laughs> um, oh, we need to actually start this in a different terminal mode, which I think is broken right now. What the fuck? <laughs> this is not what I expected. That's weird. See if I can trigger it. I forget how I triggered it before. I think it was by pressing characters really quickly. Uh, yeah, there we go. I triggered it. <laughs> um, this is actually a bunch of keys jammed together. So this is one key character. This is another key character. And this is another key character. So I got three characters in one go to show up on one thing. Um, and I don't quite know how to fix this yet, but I assume I'll eventually like, you know, do some research, Google around for stuff that's working similarly, probably look at some other source code and see how other people are handling this problem um, and go from there. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the answer is research, guessing, reading other people's code, uh, reading manual pages, reading documentation, um, stuff like that. But sometimes I don't know the answer either. Hey, what's up, Eli Mont? Thank you for the follow. Or is it Eli Mont? Welcome to the stream, either way. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, I don't work uh, at GitHub, but something similar. Don't want to spam it out there. I see. <laughs> Sarcastic Dante says, nice editor you got there. Yeah, shame if, shame if something were to completely fuck it up. Oh, whoa, that's even weirder. 
So the text is probably still here. We just probably can't see it. Yeah, the text is all there. It's just, uh... <laughs> colors are all messed up. Which makes sense. It's, it's super broken, but... Um... Love GitLab, and we totally work through. I see. Uh, Ilemon says, just got in, what are you writing? Uh, so we have a fancy little command for that. So you can do bang today. Um, I'm working on a text editor. This is, this is, no, that's not it. All right, if you type Babby, you get Nano. If you type Nano, you get Babby. Uh, this is my text editor. It's called Babby. Uh, it is a Nano clone, but it has some other, like, you know, nice features like a, a visual mode. You can uh, do some Vim commands like sort. Um, you can quit it in a bunch of different ways. You can qu quit it with Control Q. You can also do it with Control X. Um, it implements syntax highlighting using TextMate themes, which is the same as uh, Visual Studio Code. You can see if I open up this same file in Visual Studio Code, they look kind of the same. Uh, they're, they're almost identical. There's one bit that's not the same. Uh, that's an F string. We can use that one. Yeah, so you can see that F strings are slightly different. Mostly that like the F is wrong and the ending quote is wrong. But there's, there's some like minor improvements that I need to make to my uh, syntax engine to support that, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit busted, uh, but we'll we'll be we'll be fixing it eventually. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm working on. I'm working on some like performance improvements to it right now. Uh, run real xterm, not the emulation of xterm in gnome terminal. Yeah, it'd be it would be pretty broken in there too. <laughs> uh, my office is in my house most days, unless traveling. Remote work is a lot cheaper. Can help and hurt corporations. Yeah, I wish I could work remote. That'd be great. Ursula Hamster says, aw, snap. I don't know what you're referring to, but like it. Like your like your mentality there. Uh, that's a cat looking at you in white space, right? Uh, works on my machine, true, yeah. I'll actually, I'll make that mode work eventually. Uh, basically, I'll need to turn off syntax highlighting when it doesn't have color support. Um, I can actually... Um, I can detect that case. Uh, Curses gives you some stuff to do that. I'm going to show you that. So in main.py, we can do this. Um, so there's two functions that are helpful here. One of them is uh, lines minus two, zero. Um, Curses dot can change color. This is what allows me to use arbitrary colors and curses. And we also get a count of the built-in colors. So we can use that to detect whether it supports color or not. Oops. Module has no attribute colors. Sure? Are you sure? <laughs> um, oops, we should have used Babby, not Nano. Uh, probably because I didn't initialize colors. Mm. Curses has no attribute in it colors. Oh, now I fucked up my terminal. is the color can change color content color pair in it color it's not in it colors it's in it color all right must call start color first Uh, 
I promise I know what I'm doing. I should have just copy and pasted the code from the other one. There we go. Okay. So we can change colors and it sports 256 colors out of the box. That's what that tells me. Um, but yeah, there's a roundabout way to show you that, that thing there. Okay, it's unbroken. This is a non-colored mode. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's that. Uh, the Endless River asks 3.10. Yes, you've noticed that Visual Studio Code has detected Python 3.10. Um, I do actually have a 3.10 here. <laughs> it's my own fake version of Python. Uh, I wanted to find bugs in Python before uh, before 3.10 becomes a thing. It will become a thing later this year, at least in alpha versions. Uh, but it helped me find some bugs and some tools to fix them. So like, for instance, um, Virtual I've had a bug, uh, and the problem is a lot of things look at this sys.version constant, and they'll look at the first three characters of it, uh, which works fine in like Python 3.9 or 3.8 or 3.7 or 2.7 or like other versions of Python. Uh, but as soon as you jump to 3.10, suddenly it starts reporting Python 3.1, uh, which has all sorts of problems and like suddenly makes a bunch of old code run when new code should run. and. Now there's there's big big problems um so i i compiled a version where i just changed the version number so i could find these bugs earlier and then i fixed a bunch of those bugs but um yeah it was uh it was pretty cool i also made a flake 8 plugin that checks a lot of these same issues so that we can uh hopefully stomp these out before python 3.10 becomes a thing and everyone has to scramble to fix python but that's that's why that is uh, and the reason Visual Studio Code notices it is it looks for all Python executables. Um, so if we ls user bin, actually probably what it does is something like this, uh, not sys, uh, for uh, l in os.path.split os.path set. Or not this, oh, stop environ path. Um, So this is probably what VS Code does, something similar to this, where it finds all of the Pythons at various uh, various path entries and then just probably grabs the, the, the biggest one. And so that's why it does that. Uh, yes, I made Babby. <laughs> it sounds wrong. I have not, I've not produced children, although <laughs> in high school there was a rumor that I had impregnated three people, but it was very false, and I, I, to this day, don't know who came up with the rumor, but <laughs> it was to the point where, like, a teacher came up to me and was like, um, you know, there's a rumor going around that, um, that you have kids, and I'm like, fucking news to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was a weird one. But yeah, no, Babby, this text editor is something, something that I made. Um. Well, it's alias to nano right now. But yeah, I, I made I made this babby. <laughs> um let's see. Sarcastic Dante says, I have to wake up in four hours. Good night. Well thanks for stopping by. I'll see you around in the future. Uh if it will happen, yeah, 310 will happen. 4.0 will break so much code. Um Do I have six installed? I do. Uh, 6 is a good example of code that will be horribly broken by Python 4. Uh, for this particular line right here. Py3 equals sys.versioninfo0 equals equals 3. So when Python 4 happens, this will be 4. So all of this Python 3 code will suddenly not be running, and will instead be running this code down here, which is Python 2 code. So everything will be super busted. Hey, what's up, Zoomiezif? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. Zoomy, zoomy. <laughs> um, but yeah, 6 would be horribly broken if Python 4 became a thing. 
which is why I think that Python 4 will never be a thing, uh, because dumb code like this will break. Which is great for reasons, but they got it right for the 3-4 checker. But that's probably because someone else committed the code. And interestingly enough, um, several people have submitted a patch to fix this line of code, and no one has accepted it. Because um, this dude is like, oh well, by the time Python 4 happens, all, it won't be a problem. Um, no one will use 6 then. And I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, <laughs> code lasts like decades and I, th I suspect that Python 4 will be a thing within a decade of now. And um, it's going to be a royal fucking mess when we get there. It's, it's going to suck. It's going to be awful. Um, but, whatever, I tried, but there's only, there's only so much I can do. Uh, Ilemon says, I'm a bit rusty in Python, but I once made a basic engine for Python. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I once wrote a, uh, <laughs> a couple of times I've written a little assembler in Python, but nothing super, uh, super interesting. The Endless Server says, fixing bugs before they're a thing, that's next level. Yeah, it was funny because I was doing this last year and everyone's like, oh man, look at this 2020 vision this guy's got. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I really, really thought it was cool. Um, Eli Moss says, you know what I could like to see in Python as well? A visual CSS property editor. That would be kind of cool. I'm almost implementing a, a, a CSS engine here. It's just a very, very simple CSS engine. Um, it's basically, I mean, these are rules, these scopes here, and these are the, the things that they're modifying, and they end up having, uh, where's that chart with all of the, oh, that's their, like, improvement thing that I don't really care about. Here we go. Yeah, so you can see, like, where they're applying here. So this is the selector engine that I'm implementing. So it's, it's a thing. The calculator says, who knew the term alien could be so endearing, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I, because I'm the aliens, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, PC Basic, yeah. Uh, Andrew Lane says they could use if pi two elif pi three else rays. Uh, I think it would be best if they just did if pi two else, because I I think we can kind of assume that Python four will look something like Python three, or at least will be somewhat compatible. Hopefully, you know, knock on wood. But yeah, but no, this <laughs> the six code is just just uh. It's gonna be uh, horribly broken because this base string will be name error, so it would it would still crash in Python four. But uh, Ilemon says I like retro programming as a hobby. I don't. I think the the closest to retro programming that I've done is uh, during Advent of Code, which I still haven't finished. I need to finish that eventually. Um, on day fourteen, I implemented the problem in source code that worked in every version of Python that I had access to, including Python 0 0.9.1. Um, I had to do some tricks to make it work. Uh, these were the only two modules that I could consistently use in both of them. Uh, also, I didn't want to use... Um, I didn't want to use version checks at all. So there are no version checks in here. This is purely code that works in every single one of those versions. Um, String.a2i would have worked, but it wasn't available in all the versions. So I had to re-implement so like integer parsing. I had to re-implement equality because equals equals was not a thing in 0.9.1. Uh, there was only single equals for equality. Uh, I had to implement my own string index. I had to implement my own space because equality again was def uh, difficult. I had to implement strip contains. Uh, this is the actual problem itself, but anyway, this code works in all of those versions of Python, um, including argument parsing. I got the argument parsing working. This is how you had to do files way back in the day. Uh, Python 0 didn't have negative indices, so we had to do this manually. Um, but yeah, it worked. It was, um, <laughs> it was, it was kind of fun. But at the same time, it was pretty painful. But even Python 0 had like pretty decent support for stuff. But that's probably the only like, you know, archaic programming that I've done, or retro programming. 
Ursula says, is there an Anthony Plays Games channel too? Uh, sometimes I play games on this channel, uh, but not too often. Like I think I've, I've played Pokemon a couple of times. I played Faster Than Light once way back when, but pretty it's pretty, uh, pretty limited on the games. Um, I do like to play video games. I just don't really have time nowadays, it feels like. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Tend to lean towards Q Basic. I see. Relic Noon says, I literally got bit by a lazy Y2K fix this year. Speaking of, no one will be running this by then. <sighs> Yikes. Yeah, it happens. Um, well, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Interesting choice of name. Um, but, uh, wel welcome to the stream, I guess. Um,. <laughs> Oh boy. Marco says, going to sleep, it's four in the morning here. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully I'll see you around in the future. Good luck with your project. Yeah, it's working well. Um, <laughs> Just wow, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes sometimes I go a little bit of next level. Uh, streams on Saturday and Sunday. Do you update the Google Calendar with stream dates? Oh, I've totally forgotten about that. Uh, yeah, it's usually pretty up to date. Uh, today's stream was, like, not planned. Oh, that's my lift calendar. Uh, this is the one that we want. Uh, today. Today. Oh, yeah, so the this 11 a.m. stream is my regular stream, which always, like, that one's pretty much always the same, although I will not be streaming on, uh... Shit, which day is it? Is it the 7th? Yeah, because I'm going to be running a marathon on this day. Oh, fuck, is daylight savings time that day? Oh, that's just going to mess so many people up. There's going to be so many people that are going to be late for the race or early for the race because of daylight savings time. What a mess. That's just that's just rude. Um, But yeah, I usually keep this pretty up to date but i didn't i didn't put today's streaming because i didn't really know i was going to stream until like half an hour before i guess i could have put it up i just forgot oh, i just forgot but that's that's my bad but yeah i'll i'll try and keep the calendar up to date 2038 bug is starting to hit people yeah 32 bit time t that one's gonna be that one's gonna be an actual mess Elon Musk says do you mean python is not very stable uh I mean, it's it's pretty stable, um, but the amount of code that changed from zero to then, like <laughs> zero to Python three, is oh, there was a there's a subset of the syntax that worked pretty well. Um, gaming is so important to flush the brain sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just don't <laughs> have that much time, unfortunately. Uh, the calculator says, "Have you ran any prior?" This will be my first marathon. I've run a half marathon and a handful of 5Ks. And I usually run, um, I usually run, well, recently I've been running like 20 to 30 miles a week. Um, so this is my running spreadsheet. You can see this week I ran, oh, I forgot to edit. Oh, this is the wrong account. I think it's this account that has right access to this. So I didn't run any today, but I did bike 10 miles. Um, but yeah, I try. I try and run a bunch. Um, I'm not quite up to the amount of running that I did last last the end of last year, um, where I was, you know, doing 40, 30 to 40 miles a week. Um, but yeah, the marathon is a uh, quickly approaching. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I think I'm ready. Um, we'll we'll see. Oh, knock on wood. Uh, no, I don't have a different channel for gaming. I just do it on this channel. Um, but probably will at some other point. <clears throat> uh, Linux 5.6 updated time T to N64. So everyone needs to update in the next 18 years to 5.6 or newer. Wow, only in 5.6 did they change it? Yikes. Yeah, a lot of people are going to have to update. Uh, Planet Victoria says, Thanks, Anthony. Good luck with your marathon. Are you fat adapted? Keto. Mmm... No, I've mostly just been eating the same food that I normally eat. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> I can, I think I can run that far. The farthest I've ever run is is less than a marathon though. So that's, that's what's got me mostly concerned. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Um, despite, like, not actually doing a, a directed diet, my diet is usually high in protein and, uh, you know, lower in carbs, but, uh, so it's, it's adjusted in the keto direction, but I, I don't actually do, like, a particular diet. And I'm, a am a pescatarian, so I have to, like, pay attention somewhat to my diet and, like, make sure that I'm getting the proper protein intake, and so, uh, that's, that's a thing. Um. And, I don't know, recently I haven't really been eating fish all that much, so it's... I've basically been purely vegetarian for you know, the last three or four years, but I eat fish occasionally nowadays. Uh, Ursula says we can share accounts, right? Uh, here's the link about the kernel. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people are going to have to upgrade. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but now we're safe for another 239 billion years. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. The calculator says, are you going to carry snacks or water with you? Um, the plan... I'm planning to carry water with me. I don't know if I'll be able to carry snacks. We'll see. Um, yeah, I, I, plan, I do plan to carry water. Um, I still need to figure out what I'm carrying, though, as well. Because, <laughs> like, I have, like, a water bottle that sits on my hand. And usually when I run, I run with two-pound weights or three-pound weights in each hand. Um, but I won't have those weights when I'm running, which will hopefully mean I go faster. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, I'm planning to have water strapped on here. I might buy a second water bottle, so I have two water bottles. And I think I have to carry my phone because I don't have any friends that are going to be there to, like, grab my shit. Um... Which is gonna suck, but you know, carrying my phone, carrying my uh, water bottle, <laughs> and maybe I'll put like I don't know, you know, like a bag of nuts or something in my pocket. Um, but although <laughs> running and eating nuts at the same time sounds like a bad idea, so maybe I should pick some other food that's not likely for me to choke on it. <clears throat> but we'll see. How did Anthony die? He choked on nuts. That sounds great. <laughs> Uh, uh, Eli Mont says, does Python have pointers? I mean, C Python does in, um, in the C code, but Python itself doesn't directly have pointers. You can access pointers using C types, though. So I guess that kind of is, uh, is pointer-like. Um, but no, Python itself doesn't have pointer types. Everything is a reference, or every object in Python is a reference. It's a referential based language. <clears throat> uh, that's the best diet, right? High protein, high fat. Om nom 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 nom. Uh, I'm rereading about Python. Apparently, it does not have pointers. How do you pass a parameter by reference? Everything is a reference, so that's how you do it. Use MCT oil. <laughs> uh, medium chain triglycerides, right. Uh, mostly from coconut oil. Makes sense. It looks so gross, though. <laughs> Promotes weight loss in several important ways. Interesting. These, these seem like fake news, but I can I can believe some of it. Um, I actually used to... In school, I studied biochemistry until I switched to computer science, so I actually have quite a bit of, uh, you know biology and health background stuff yeah it's an oil um OMBSD made a song when they patched their they made a time song <laughs> made a time song uh <laughs> is it sung to a particular tune uh oh no where oh they have lots of songs what the fuck <laughs> Why do they have so many songs? 
No lyrics. This one doesn't have any lyrics. I see. Look at these thuggin' blowfishes. Wild. I had no idea that they made songs. Biotech industry, here you come. Yeah, the problem is biotech uh, doesn't pay all that well, unfortunately. Well, it is a curve. Like, if you're like, the top of the top in biotech, pays a shit ton. But the average and, and mean, or the, the mean and median are lower than what I would make other places, unfortunately. What is this? 843 pending changes. That seems like a problem. We're going to close that. That's not 843 pending, pending changes. What are, you, what are you talking about, VS Code? <clears throat> they use it for CBD oil, often because it transports the active, in, active ingredient faster into the blood than normal oils. Oh. Interesting. Makes sense, I guess. Um. Add style. Blank. Actually, I should have made this still. Made sure this still works. Demo Rust. Demo Python. Demo PowerShell. Cool. Okay, what time is it? Seven o'clock. I've been streaming for four hours ish. Um, I guess we can do one more little. Well, who knows how little it's going to be now that I think about it. Um. Hey, what's up, uh, William F? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to do. I don't know how much comes, <laughs> I don't know how much work it's gonna be, is the problem, because uh, it could be a lot of work. It could also be very very quick, which is parent scope lookup. Um, Oh, the other problem is it breaks my dynamic programming here. <laughs> uh, that's great. Hey, what's up, uh, Jspot? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Are you a bot or are you a human? Um, <laughs> interestingly, so every uh, every follow that happens on Twitch, uh, gmail.com i hope it's gmail.com yeah every follow that happens on twitch i get an email about and um someone some people have followed my bot including joey joey uh joey's bites has followed my bot <laughs> so i hate to break it to you guys um i don't think my bot is gonna do any streams but <laughs> it does have a few followers oh no that's my channel um but look, my bot has my bot has three followers. <laughs> it looks like you unfollowed, but at, at one point you were a follower. <clears throat> but <laughs> is identical also follows my bot, which is a uh, fun. Why is this heart spazzing out? Well, maybe I'm just seeing things. Anyway. <laughs> That's what all the chatbots say, right? Uh, Jspot is totally a human, Kappa. <laughs> nice. Um, Charlotte's Web CBD is good stuff. I remember that CBD is the non-psychoactive receptors. I see. Yes. Uh, Ilamon asks, have you worked on PWA apps? Um, progressive web app apps? <laughs> I was trying to remember what PWA stands for. Yes, I have. Um, uh, not, let's see. That's different from SPAs, which are single page apps. Um, this one is technically progressive, I think. <laughs> in that like, this is what it looks like in a browser. Um, you know, it's, it's responsive is what I would refer to it as but like 
it was developed to mobile first, and so like this is what it looks like on a mobile device, and uh, you know, you get these nice big photos and like the text, and it's all arranged nicely. But when you uh, expand it out, you get these different views that you would get on a different device, and like, you know, it's it's responsive. I tried to to make it work. <laughs> is that what you mean by a progressive web app? But. Uh, but yeah, I, I used to be a front-end developer way back in the day. So this is this is one of them. <laughs> one app that I've worked on. I also used to work at, uh, at Yelp, where I worked on a lot of pages there. Uh, this is one of the pages that I worked on. It was not progress. It was not responsive when I worked on it, but it may be now. Nope. <laughs> You can just get scroll bars. Man, you have to make your browser this big to view the page? That's amazing. Just like, eliminate all the other people. But yeah, this is one of the modules that I worked on. Uh, this is one of the modules I worked on, but I didn't do all of this CSS stuff. Uh, I worked on this module over here. Uh, where's review search? I worked on the, oh, these are ads. Where's the highlights? Do they not have review highlights anymore? What the fuck, Yelp? Uh, but I worked on the review search. Um, but anyway, I used to work at Yelp. I did a bunch of their web app stuff. Uh, it's glitchy because the web browser is smaller, yeah. Uh, Cybergenics says, I've been reading this and trying to implement this to crypto. What do you think? Uh, da, 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 da. If the web page loads, <clears throat> wow, that's a real laggy website. Subscribe to our mailing list. How about no? This article focuses on using deep LSTM neural network architecture to provide multi-dimensional time series forecasting using Keras and TensorFlow, specifically on stock market data sets to provide momentum indicators of stock price. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I know nothing about uh, machine learning and and, uh, and related fields. So unfortunately, I can't really help you here. Um, that's one of the parts that I've kind of stayed away from is the data science-y stuff. So sorry, I, I don't, I can't really help you out here. <clears throat> but yeah, so, good luck, <laughs> I don't know. Um, check out this PWA. Hey, it's pretty good. Oh, I'm gonna get uh, demonetized on YouTube though. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you. Yeah. Um, there's this great phone number that you can dial. 248-434-5508. Um, definitely have that one memorized. Um, but yeah, that's a fun one that you can give out to your friends. Um, I think I have it in my phone as Sir Astley. <laughs> but yeah, it just rickrolls you and then hangs up. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's 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 what happens. You got me. It's it's 2020 and we're still rickrolling. Um, we've come so far. <laughs> But yeah, you can see uh, you can see how brave I am at, at clicking on your links. But now I don't trust you. So now now I'm gonna have to open your links in another tab. So uh, you kind of you kind of you, you got your one shot there, Andrew Lane. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, Gamesational? Game Gamesational? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh. Good one to use at the clubs when somebody asks for your number, right? What was that number? Two four. I put it in the chat. It's two four eight four three four five five zero eight. I think. Man, I hope I didn't just like give away like my ex girlfriend's number. That'd be bad. It's like one of the few numbers I have memorized, and I hope I gave the right one. Let me double check. <laughs> uh, phone four three four. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So when you dial it. I hope it still works. 
I haven't tried this in a couple of years. Yeah, there we go. It's too low. You know the rules, and so do I. <laughs> uh. Wait, one camel posted a link to? Oh yeah, dev.to. Yeah, I know dev.to. Look at this. Mobile first. So good. Um. <clears throat> Accidental doxing, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be shitty? <laughs> Ursula the Hamsters is 9006969699. It's, uh, nice. <laughs> uh, I once rickrolled somebody by streaming it. Hmm. But yeah, anyway, 434-5508. That's, uh... Or 248-434-5508. I used to not need the area code because that was my was my home area code. Way back when. Oh no! You have three digits of my phone number. <laughs> Good luck getting the other seven. <clears throat> uh. Oh J Spot. <laughs> Oh, it's, a, it's a pretty good number. Um, yeah, so the problem with... Um, okay, so I want to implement parent selectors, and the way they talk about parent selectors is they store it as a separate data member on their... Where's their TypeScript thing? Yeah, so they have, um... Oh, they only have a single parent. So they don't support multiple parents at all. Oh, except, no, this could have a parent itself. Let's see. So... Hmm. <laughs> If you're doing a good job, the other person should not be able to do their part. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. Uh, that is a good way to put it. I hadn't really thought about it that way. <laughs> um... <laughs> Great, I'm like four years old now. Uh, okay, so we would need to add parents here. And parent be theme try node. But I think it's just a list of these. <laughs> or I could do it like they do it and just like make a linked list out of this. Seems to be underscored. <sighs> but it's not, it's optional, this guy. Which makes this kind of annoying. So maybe I would do list of, list of theme try node. <clears throat> Um, does this data structure work? Oh, except it can't be list. It must be tuple. So we need that sweet, sweet immutability. Just 
function name is too long. I'm just gonna fix that. And you still don't fit on one line. <clears throat> Suave Boone says, hello broadcaster, what are you working on? I mean, other than 69 jokes. Um, are we going a text editor? Oh, that's not my text editor. This is my text editor. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because right now if I type Babby, I get Nano. And if I type Nano, I get Babby. Uh, but Babby is my text editor. I've written it from scratch in Python. And we're working on the syntax highlighting engine for it right now, which works. It's just, you know, ever so slightly buggy. And, um, you know, it's, it's also slow in some ways. So if I jump to the end of the file, it takes a little bit of time to parse the whole file and get to the end, so I'll have to do some like special tweaking optimizations to make that faster or like a better user experience, uh, which shouldn't be hard. I just haven't done it yet. Um, it's more noticeable on really really long files like this one. Actually, we'll get the longest file that I have, which is this one. And if I jump to the end of the file, you can see it takes like a second or so to get to the bottom of the file. But, a broadcaster has the name, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Anthony writes code, I wonder what I wonder what his name is. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, it's actually way faster than it was before. Like, this used to take a solid like three seconds to get down there. Well, actually, let's see. Let's see what happens if we look at the log. Control end, and then exit. Yeah, so it's less than a 1.1 seconds. And this used to take like three or four seconds. So we've we've made a lot of progress on the performance. And I, I keep saying that because like the original one took like 12 seconds to render a 600 line file. Uh, this file I think is like 2900. 2300. Um, so that would have taken 48 seconds to render that file. That's where we started. Now we're down to one second. So we've we've made like a 48x improvement. <clears throat> Jspot says, I think what you're typing in Python, but it's definitely, or I think what you're typing is Python, but it's definitely different from the Python I'm writing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, typing the Python uh, so that I can use it with MyPy and do type checking. Thinking the file I opened late recently that was eight, nine megabits of XML shutters. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh, let's see, do I have any really, really, really big files? So, Babby's actually pretty good about opening large files. Uh, pi upgrade, pi upgrade, pi. So like, oh, that's nano. <laughs> right, we gotta flip it. So it's it's pretty good about opening them quickly. Uh, it's really just about like the render speed for jumping to the end and it's fast once you've done it once so like this is You know pretty fast uh, Oh, that was without the perf log So the first jump to the end is slow, but after that it's reasonable uh, Yeah, like you can see here. It's less than a millisecond to do those those next renders but the first one is is slower <clears throat> uh, I also can't see Suave Boom's handle in dark mode, Planet Victoria, so I have actually like moved the chat over and like highlighted the name just so I could see it. But, so we get for dark mode. Uh, do you do you set an arbitrary max file size that Babby can open? Nope. You could in theory open the largest file possible. Um, so let's see, let's make a really big file. Uh, seek one, ten. We'll make a file that's twenty-one thousand lines long, twenty, twenty, twenty-three thousand lines long. Uh, XRX replace dash dash c cat pi upgrade pi upgrade dot pi into t dot pi. Yeah. So there's a twenty-three thousand line file is less than a megabyte. Well, let's make it bigger than that. Let's make it seven megabytes. <sighs> so it takes a little while to do the initial open, but, uh, oh. Oh, I see, this is what I had in that file before. <laughs> um, 
but you know, it's usable. It's not like slow ones I got here. But if we jump to the end, oh boy. Oh, actually that didn't take so long. Probably because of the caching, because it's repeating the, the code over and over and over. But, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, does Nano handle that? Probably. But Nano has like a similar problem with the initial load. But that's a pretty good stress test for a 8.4 meg file. Um, let's see, Multihex says, what makes the second render so much faster? Can you do the work eagerly before the first jump happens? Yes, that's the eventual plan. Uh, so uh, probably the easiest way is to draw this in paint. So let's say we have our file here. That's a bunch of lines. Um, and let's say that we have our screen here. Oh, this is our, uh, our, you know, our, oops, <laughs> we have our screen here. So what happens right now is when Babby opens, well, actually, whenever it renders a screen, it picks the bottom line in the file. Uh, arrow green. That's not an arrow. Arrow. Leftward arrow. It picks the bottom line in the file and renders up until there. So it will store basically this as pre-parsed. And then if you, if you move down in the file, so let's say you scroll down, you know, a little bit more than one screenful, uh, it will then update what it has stored to also store this. And every line in the file, the computation is based on every previous line. So it's the, the input to highlighting this line is the end state of the previous line plus this string, which yields a new end state. Um, and the, the absolute worst case is, you know, starting with the, the file opening and then jumping all the way to the end uh, because it has to render has to render everything before that. Um, and there's some clever stuff that I can do here to make this not so bad. Uh, notably, like when you're when you're working on a file, you usually don't open it and then immediately jump to the end of the file. Um, so what I can do is I can I can open the file, I can render again like this chunk up to here, and then display the screen because that's what the user really cares about. They want to see the they want to see the output as soon as possible. Uh, but then in the background, like maybe in a thread or something, render out the rest of the file such that it'll be it'll be fast enough to, to render there. Um. Um, but yeah, I don't have an arbitrary limit and that's why it's like that. Oh, Andrew Lane, you did ask this earlier. Does it support line numbers? Bebby does not currently support line numbers. Um, I don't really like line numbers myself. But uh, we actually showed this on another stream. It wouldn't be hard to add them. Um, like I, I wrote like, I think it was like six lines of code and it went from not having line numbers to suddenly having line numbers. There were of course some like off by one bugs and like the, the line wrapping didn't work quite properly, but it, it's not hard to add them. I just don't like them. They take up screen real estate that I would rather have for actual code. Um, but yeah, I could I could add it. Uh, have you tried opening a five petabyte file though? Um, I don't have a five petabyte file, so <laughs> it would be pretty hard for me to do that. Uh, there's settings for chat. Only visible colors should work. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Someone should show me how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, like the disk doesn't really have that much, so it wouldn't really work. Andrew Lane says, wait, what operating system are you on? <laughs> um, it's Windows. Um, I'm running Ubuntu in a VM. <clears throat> Nano has them disabled by default. Yeah, Nano has an option for it, but Bambi does not. But it may, it may eventually, yeah. <laughs> but yes, I'm super sneaky using uh, using Windows. Um, I'm gonna go grab a drink of water. I will be right back. Um, I'll see you guys in a minute.
All right, we're back. Uh, Joyce Bot says Oception, yeah. Uh, Andrew Lane says Ubuntu 19 for the win. Well, um, I'm actually running uh, 1804 because I like um, I like uh, stability, so I, I stick with stability. <clears throat> Uh, Vagrant with Ubuntu? No, this is VirtualBox. Um, and then the next question is usually like, well, what are your VirtualBox settings? So I'll show you my VirtualBox settings. Uh, I give it eight gigs of RAM and slightly less than half of my physical cores, or sorry, slightly less than my physical cores. So I have five phys or six physical cores and I'm giving it five of them. I have 12 virtual CPUs though. Uh, I enable PAENX, which is one of the there, now you can clip me sneezing. <laughs> um, I enable PAENX, which is one of the nesting acceleration features. Uh, my BIOS doesn't support VTX, so I don't enable that. Um, oh, I guess I do enable that. But there's... Oh, I don't enable nested VTX, so it doesn't support nested VTX, but I do enable VTX. Uh, I give it as much display memory as it will let me, which is not actually that much. Uh, I have a fixed size uh, hard disk that I give it, which has 40 gigs. And then the rest of it's not super interesting, except for I guess I give it a shared folder. But that's my VirtualBox settings. Uh, Netclerk says, damn, a BRB window stream quality improving. Yeah, I watched someone else's stream and I was like, this is not that hard to set up. So then I'll set it up myself. But I did set up a, uh, I did set up a, um, a couple of scenes. So I have, I have the, you know, the stream scene, which is the one that I've been using for forever. Uh, then I have like a, a face scene where you can see, you know, chat over, over there hanging out and you can see my my face you know the selfie cam so i can be uh super narcissistic in this in this scene and then i have the brb scene which i've learned is muted which actually is probably a feature not a bug but yeah couldn't hear me <laughs> but yeah i have have some fancy fancy scenes now I'm trying to incrementally improve my my stream quality, but uh, 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 Jspot says saw 399 subscribers on YouTube. Had to round it up. Well, thank you for the subscription on YouTube. Um, eh, much much smaller than my uh, Twitch channel, but we're we're getting there. But yeah, look at that big 400. Are we gonna do the the 400 subscriber special? <laughs> This is where chat's like, 24 hour stream, 24 hour stream. Uh, <laughs> let's see, Narcos Gaming says, have you ever worked with web requests? Uh, is that in JavaScript? I don't know without knowing what it is. Everything here looks like it's a C-sharp library. I'm not sure. I, I don't think that I've worked with web requests, a library with that exact name, but I have worked with requests for websites and stuff. Um, so yes-ish? Not sure. Uh, Jspot says, you look like one of my professors in university, by the way. Well, I did once, <laughs> I did once teach at a university and uh, we would get form mail, and they didn't really know the difference between uh, instructor assistants and professors. So I got a bunch of email addressed to, Dear Professor Satilli. <laughs> I was like, yes, I will be Professor Satilli for you. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm not a professor. Uh, hey, what's up? Panda Person TTV and... Uh, oh, that was when I was away. Well, thank you for the follow. Sorry I was slow on that one. And Nins QQ, thank you as well for the follow. Uh, Planet Victoria asks, did you ever use Django with VirtualBox? Yes, a couple of times. I don't really use Django all that often recently. I've mostly been sticking to like Flask and such, um, but I have written some Django in the past. 
We've had issues, but I think it was Vagrant that's the problem. Oh, on localhost. Yeah, you have to do some like weird network bridging. Uh, I don't remember whether I have it set up on this or not. Uh, adapter one is NAT, so I don't think I've set it up. Uh, but yeah, if you set up, I think, a bridged adapter, then you can use, uh, you can use local, or you can export ports and read them from your host machine. Um, but it's been a while since I've done that, because I mostly just work inside my VM, and I don't really worry about exposing outward. But I had to do some, like, weird shit to make my VPN work before for that, so... Um, soon you'll have a window called stream starting soon and you'll wait an hour before actually streaming. That would be, I don't think I'm going to do that. I feel like the stream starting soon is really only useful for like five minutes so that people can like ignore the ads or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know the people that do the stream starting soon and it's like 20 minutes later they start. I feel like that's kind of, kind of shitty, but uh, Joyce Byte says, if you did a 24-hour stream, what would you do? I mean, programming, right? I'd write some code. Uh, I don't know what I would work on, though. I mean, I have lots of... I, I have an infinite stream of projects, basically. <laughs> I, th I think I have... My to-do list never gets shorter, is my problem. But I think I would find plenty of stuff to work on. Um, I think the, the rough part would be uh, staying awake, I think. <laughs> Um, uh, Jspot asks, how long have you been coding for freelancer slash working somewhere? Uh, I work at Lyft on the developer experience team, uh, where we build tools and software for developers. The uh, goal of that being uh, <laughs> that they become more productive and, you know, churn out more code faster. Uh, but it turns out it's a hard problem to make people productive, so, um, yeah, we try our best. Um, but we most, I mostly work on like tooling and stuff for other developers. Uh, and I've been coding for almost 20 years. <laughs> um, I've been coding for about 18 years. Uh, I started when I was 10 years old. So if you do the math, I'm 28 years old. <laughs> but um, yeah, some of my first programs were cheating on math homework for school because I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to type in that damn quadratic formula so many times, and so I wrote a bit of code that... All right, first it started as a calculator program where um, I wrote some TI basic on my, you know, TI-83 that, uh, you know, you'd spit the numbers in and it would spit out the answer. Um, but then I realized that not everyone else in the class had TI-83s, and so I ported it to Visual Basic 5 and ran it inside of Microsoft Word's uh, you know, visual form macro thing. And then we distributed the code using um, using floppy disks. So if that helps date me. <laughs> but yeah, I've been, I've been programming for quite a while. Uh, I've been programming, let's see, I've been paid to write code since 2009. Um, so that means I've been in industry for 11 years, although a couple of those years were as internships. So that's uh, that's kind of my my history. Uh, bridge adapter, yes, that's what I've used to make logos work in the past. Panda person TTV says I have Ubuntu and Windows both dual boot. Um, I just use VMs for the most part. Some of my computers I dual boot. Some of them I boot Ubuntu directly. Uh, let's see, my work laptop I boot Ubuntu and macOS. Uh, this machine. Uh, this machine and my laptop, I have basically the same setup where I run Windows on the host and uh, Ubuntu in a VM. Uh, I have a really shitty Mac Mini that I use to compile stuff on that sits in my living room. Um, hey, what's up? APIs and IPAs, that's such a good handle. I love it. <laughs> APIs and IPAs. Although I don't like IPAs, but I do like beer. Um, but I have, I have a little Mac Mini that I use to like build software on. Uh, literally only a build machine. I just use it to SSH to it and like copy binaries off of it. Um, and Technician, thank you as well for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I have a computer in my living room that runs Linux, that runs Ubuntu, that uh, I use to like watch YouTube on my TV. 
Um, what other computers do I have? I have an old laptop that I don't use anymore that runs Windows 8. Is that it? I used to have another machine, but that one I took apart. Yeah, I think that's it. Hey, what's up? The Russian German 555. Thank you for the follow. Russian German. That's an interesting combination. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> uh, Andrew Lane says it's good for people to come and not miss the intro. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice. Um, I do kind of do a little spiel at the beginning, so maybe maybe I'll start like you know five minutes earlier and uh, get the whole starting. But you know, Twitch has shown me my um, my go live stats, and I think. So the the click the click through rate on the notifications is like almost zero for the the live notification. So either Twitch's stats are wrong, which I would totally believe because you know stats are always garbage, um, or like you know the go live signal is not actually that important to people. But who knows? I don't. <laughs> Interestingly, my largest traffic source is direct, which I think means that like <clears throat> people just happen to. You know, type in my URL. Uh, well, this is mostly on Saturdays. I don't actually know the stats for other days, but on Saturdays, like people type in the URL a lot or something like that. <clears throat> um, some people might have notifications daily. Yeah, it shows me that. Um, who I have. 33,000 followers-ish. Uh, yeah, so 75% of people, 74% of people have notifications disabled. So this is the number that have it enabled. So a lot of people have it disabled. Uh, now Cleric says, speedrun Pokemon Stadium and lay on your bed Worcester style, right? With the lights off? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think if I did a 24-hour stream, I would try and code for the whole thing. Adderall. Yeah, that would be one solution. Uh, Andrew Lane says, I'm not even 18 years old yet. Oof. <laughs> I've been coding for a while then. Making me feel old. Staying awake is the hardest part. Actually doing it right now. <laughs> Happens. Nightcleric says, I heard Fernie was coding for 10 of those 18 years. Um. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Maybe even more of those 18 years. Um. Yeah, because I, I think I went by that handle until, like, until I realized that I need to get a job and, like, actually have a, you know, not goofy <laughs> nickname handle for everything. <clears throat> yeah, the thing with Adderall is it wouldn't actually, well, so I, I, I am diagnosed with ADHD and I took medicine for it for oh, probably from when I was age five until... 1996 until 2012. So for 16 years, I took Concerta. I also took Ritalin. Uh, Suave Boon says, wait, this is you? Yes. This is me. Um, <laughs> this is indeed me, Suave Boon. <laughs> But yeah, I used to take medicine for Concerta, and then I stopped, um, I stopped medicating when my doctor would not give me pills because my blood pressure was slightly too high because I had white coat syndrome, which is where, um, the sight of a doctor, for whatever reason, increases my blood pressure. And then, because I'm thinking about knowing that if I see a doctor, it's going to raise my blood pressure, that stresses me out more, which raises my blood pressure more, and then uh, it's just like a real pain in the butt to actually get, like, medication. Um, oh, Ritalin and Adderall are this... So, Ritalin... <laughs> getting some chemistry out here. Ritalin is the racemic version of the drug, so the drug is chiral, which means that... Uh, chirality in chemicals means that... It has a, like, a turnedness to it. So, like, uh, if you put it up to a mirror, you would see a different image of it. Kind of like your hand. Your hands have chirality. Because, uh, you know, like, if you put a mirror in, in between, they are, you know, opposites of each other. Um, Ritalin has a racemic mi mixture, which means that it has both forms of the chirality, but in a 50-50 mixture. 
Um, and Adderall is, I believe, only the the, the D isomer, which is one of the one of the chiral forms, um, which causes it to be, I think, three times as potent for the same uh, the same mass. Uh, but anyway, tiny tiny chemistry, but Ritalin and Adderall are, are kind of the same thing. They're the same drug. And Concerta is Ritalin, but in a slow release form. Um, so the, with with Ritalin, when I took Ritalin, I would have to take it, I think, three times a day or two times a day. And man, I hated taking drugs twice a day. I would have to go into the, like, get called down to the principal's office just to take drugs. And like, that sucked. And so I would always like procrastinate about it. And like, Anthony, it's time to come down to the principal's office. And people would be like, oh, you're in trouble. Oh, shit. But no, it'd be just to take drugs and go back to class. But, but yeah, I, I uh, ADHD, it's real. Um, so now I, since I'm not medicated now, I have to like spend a lot of time to, right? I have to spend a lot of mental energy to repress it, you know? Um, so I, <laughs> I, I, sp I spend a lot of effort to stay focused on things. And sometimes it's very hard, but. I put my best effort in, and I'm mostly a functioning individual, I like to think. <laughs> Cries. But, yeah. But yes, that's that's Ritalin's, and uh, I don't know, how, how did we get to Ritalin? <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know how we got there. Um, oh, because we were talking about all-nighters, right, yes, yes. Um, but yes, in when I was 14 years old, so in 2015, um, I guess it could have been in 2016. No. Yeah, it could have been in 2016. Uh, oh, no, 2006. I can't do math. Yeah. <laughs> March of 2006, I found a vulnerability in Gmail. Um, I tried to report it through the proper means, but didn't either, like, I don't know, I was young and stupid, let's be real. I tried my best to do it the right way, but then eventually just like posted a blog post about it and then uh, posted an article to dig.com. If you guys remember dig.com, it was it was the Reddit before I read it, but now it's just kind of like a news aggregation. But it, it basically used to work similar to Reddit where like people would upvote and like you would you'd have a front page and like stuff like that. Uh, but then they sold out and ads and full rewrite and blah, blah, blah. I was on the front page of dig.com, I was on the front page of Yahoo News, a bunch of other news sites um, based on a, a vulnerability that I found in Gmail. Uh, it was a cross-site scripting vulnerability where if you emailed a plain text email with script at the top of it, um, is the image still here? I just put it back up! <laughs> Probably a long time ago. Um, but yeah, this is what, what it would look like. Wait, I thought Flickr was dead. I thought they deleted all the images. Anyway, this is what uh, my computer used to look like way back in the day. I had this like custom Windows XP theme that was not rounded, but white and like, no. But anyway, this was me sending JavaScript that alerted ASDF with a capital F for whatever fucking reason um, way back in the day. But yeah, I didn't get any money from it because you know, they didn't reply to my bounty and I was dumb and stupid but yeah no money from Google unfortunately Andrew Lane would have been would have been nice <laughs> but I probably would have blown, uh, blown it on like uh, you know Pokemon cards or something back then just smoke weed cure for all illnesses right Nella <laughs> uh, how do you kill your friend's server by uploading a picture um <laughs> Does it mention that? Because it definitely did happen. Uh, yeah. So I I hosted it on another website that my uh, friend owned because this was before I had like, you know, widespread image upload services. And the amount of bandwidth that was served from that single image uh, was just was like tens of gigabytes just because so many people opened that blog article. Um, and that was enough to bring down the registrar, or uh, bring down the host and have the registrar ban that pathway. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hosted on this domain name, 
which is apparently fucking broken right now. Which I'll I don't I don't know the register, so I have to like talk to my friend and like figure out why this is busted and fix it. But um, it you, it was running, so <laughs> I don't know why it's crashing right now. But uh, ipnow.org is a website that I wrote. It's a IP address based uh, an IP address image service. Um, but that was the domain that we hosted it on, and that's <laughs> that's what got our hosting service to ban us. We we eventually got unbanned when we we're like, okay, we changed the link. But, um, <laughs> 24 hour stream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does that help you get a job? No, but it does make for fun party jokes nowadays, I guess. Like, you know, when you when you play, uh, what's the game? Like, Two Truths and a Lie. No one thinks this is the truth, so it's, it's an easy one to scapegoat there. Uh, do you use Gmail now or no? Yes, I use Gmail. Uh, I have four main Gmail accounts that I switch between for different things. Imagine if there was a bug bounty for this and you missed out. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, if you found something like this, I think it's like $100,000 or something for something this, uh, this, um, this severe, I think. Something like that. Did Blogger not support images? No, you couldn't upload images back then. It probably does now, but like, you couldn't then. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. It's cool to hear. Oh, IP now was a bookmark way back in the day. Yeah. Oh, it's it still is on my... Uh... Oh, no, it isn't. I took it off. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, it still is on my main browser, too. Um, I haven't really changed all that much since then. <clears throat> Specs finished the paperwork. Welcome back. Uh, had this notification often yesterday. We couldn't play K Tan WD. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess I guess IP now is down. I should I should message my friend. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I probably should talk to him because uh, we were we were besties back in the day. But it's been it's been a while since I've chatted with him. Um. And it's 8 o'clock now. I really gotta eat some food, so I'm probably not gonna finish this last bit that I was gonna do. Um, I renamed some stuff and I added this. We'll fill that in later. Yeah, so this is probably not gonna happen. Um, so I'm probably gonna wrap up the stream here, because I'm hungry, and I gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> you might be watching now. Yeah, that would be crazy. Um, if you're out there, Aaron, I miss you, friends. We should, we should hang out sometime. Um, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll reach out to him. I'm not going to be a terrible human being, but, uh, let me do my spiel and, <laughs> right, Swamp Boon? <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> it's funny though. I like it. Um, but yeah, anyway, so if you like the content, like what you saw, want to check out other contents, uh, I usually upload all my streams to YouTube. Uh, and that's youtube.com slash anthonyrightscode. Ooh, now I'm at 401 subscribers. Good job, guys. Uh, but yeah, and if you missed any part of the stream, it'll be uploaded there as well. Uh, I usually stream on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I announce those in two places. One of those is on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash codewithanthony. I couldn't get Anthony Red's code because it's too many characters, and you know, Anthony Wright's cod is not not quite the same. Um, we're gonna we're gonna write in some fish there. <laughs> I make this stupid joke like every stream. I should really just stop. Um, but yeah, you can follow me there. I usually announce something like you know thirty or sixty minutes in advance uh, that I'm streaming. Oops. And so I announce there. And I also announce on Discord, uh, which you can find the Discord in the chat. Imagine using the Twitter light theme. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, Anthony types code? Uh, I guess I could have done that. I went with code with Anthony because I felt it was close enough. Um, Spec says, I think I found a GitHub project I can contribute to. Nice, that's good. Uh, Jay says, feeling thankful because pulling an all-nighter is hard after reaching 20 years old. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's all I've got for today. I'm gonna go find someone to raid and send you guys off to another channel. <laughs>